the world is controlled by one power. The apple is success. There ain't no pride. There ain't no shame. Orchard League Fantasy Podcast, the Orchard Fantasy League Podcast. I think I said it a few different ways last year, but uh, it is good to be back. Um, obviously, I have a few changes this year that we're uh, excited to show you guys, and uh, a couple of guests in the house today. These are people, two people, you know. They are two inspirational people. They love people. Not they true. they, <laughs> they uh, inspire me to be a better person for the people. Um, I mean, I, I don't think I could even say anything else besides that, but we have Logan and Alex Bruce. How's it going, guys? Great. Hey, the people, man. <laughs> one of the good. better intros i've heard <laughs> <laughs> good good uh good way to start off the year but yeah finally finally back i mean i've been doing this for since last year <laughs> <laughs> so uh so it's how's been, it it's been a hell of a run <laughs> <laughs> so how's it been going guys with covid and everything going on this craziness go ahead um what, do you have notes on that? I do, yeah. <laughs> COVID updates. It's a section on here. Um, there's, no, there's nothing underneath it. I'm looking at it I now. Have, I have no updates. <laughs> nothing, nothing is going on. Um, no, it's, it sucked, man. Um, been uh, locked away on the east side. Had some big uh, life changes. I've been studying for the bar through all of this. Um, trying to find a job. But uh, hopefully it all comes to an end soon. Yeah, that's pretty exciting stuff. Uh, <laughs> how about you, Logan? I have a more positive uh, experience. <laughs> it's um, the bar study. It wears me down. Mm. Yeah. So when's the bar? It's, uh, October 5th and 6th. Is it in person? Uh, no, it's it's online. So how's, you can, How's that work? Yeah, can you cheat? Uh, no, we're not. There's actually a lot of rules. Um, we're not allowed to make any noise. If anybody enters the screen, we will um, likely fail. Um, I can't touch my face or my hair. Otherwise, they'll think I'm cheating. Um, no bathroom breaks. Otherwise, how long is this? They, they think I'm cheating. Um, so they cut it in half. It's now only, I think, eight hours of testing. You can't use the bathroom for so there, eight hours. There's a break. There's a break in between. But um, still, well, no. you can't touch your face for eight hours. <laughs> I go to the bathroom so much anymore. Like uh, Logan and I work together. For anyone that doesn't know, but you probably see me getting up. Like at least nine or ten times throughout the day. Sometimes I question why you're going to the bathroom so much. What's really, <laughs> what's going on in there? <laughs> right. Just the midday uh, squeeze. Yeah, I am uh, might have to fill the pants on camera for the Ohio State Bar <laughs> Association to see. <laughs> you, know, you know people are probably doing that. Oh, yeah. They're like diapering up. They're actually like uh, monitoring our microphones too. So if I bust a fart or something like that, they're going to... They're gonna hear it. Oh, I thought you were, you were gonna say you, like, you fail. You fail. <laughs> I fail. He's cheating. No, so it's one of those situations where there, there's someone specifically <laughs> watching you, or is there one person watching like a what would be like a classroom full of people? So the way they're doing it is basically if your microphone is like activated, 
it will flag something and somebody's going to review <laughs> that uh <laughs> that sound bite so <laughs> yeah so there's a guy that <laughs> monitors the farts pretty much basically <laughs> some suspicious activity it sounded so. like an answer was in that fart <laughs> <laughs> um yeah that'd be a bold strategy to just have your uh roommate or something <laughs> communicating <laughs> through fart noises right morse code yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> well yeah good stuff well how uh, about your music logan how has uh, it been with covid obviously you can't really do any live shows right yeah so i don't know we're recording this what is it, the 27th today i don't know when it'll actually release but i have a song releasing in like five hours it is a remix to my old or a song I released last year called Light Up the Sky. So we'll see how that goes. Um, I think it's like the 10th or 11th song I've released now. Okay. So, how, how can people access it? Um, YouTube, Spotify, Apple Music, pretty much everywhere. Not Pandora, though. I don't know why I have not made it onto Pandora yet. I forgot Pandora was even a thing. Anymore. So did or I until it? people started asking if I was on Pandora. And I'm wondering, why are you asking that question? <laughs> Those why, people don't matter. Are you are, are you on Pandora? Why are you on Pandora? Like that's what I want to ask people. Like, what are you doing? There are other options. Yeah. Um, I, so everywhere but Pandora. Hmm. Yeah. Ideally, um, we can find that song um, in a club near you once they open up. It is a remix. I think it would be a, a good club hit as well. Did I send it to you? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I it's, have heard uh, it, yes. it's vibrant and exciting, like the upcoming fantasy football season should be. <laughs> that's, um, that's a segue right there. Now, a lot of people, a lot of artists are saying they have to almost be more creative now that, or it, they're, it's forcing them to be more creative during this time. Do you feel like you have been or kind of been putting it off? I mean, it's been, I, I don't do a lot of shows. That was actually something that my future manager um said that like once this all passes huh oh yeah (laughs) (laughs) um said like we would focus more on that but i guess like i don't know for me it's been kind of cool because there's not an obligation i don't really i don't haven't like enjoyed playing shows really yet um like being like the guy and not that there's anything wrong with it it's just not my thing like to be in the corner of the bar playing cover songs while nobody listens to you Mm -hmm. like i don't really like doing that um, so like not having the obligation to feel like I have to go out and do that right. has been good. Yeah, for sure. And so then, now it's just like release music digitally, promote it digitally. You're saying how much I like people. That's not true. Digitally <laughs> releasing music is a dream. Um, so I don't know. It's It's been cool. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I, I've only played in front of people one time. Was and, it at Highland? Yeah. And it was we went out there and we weren't playing... It, like once we got out there we realized we weren't really playing songs that people want to like st- eat their lunch and listen to you yeah. know was it a talent show no it was, oh he well, just got you like a gig at their lunch yeah yeah man. <laughs> it was just like in a, a courtyard and like pe- they don't have like a set lunch so it's like whenever people want to take their lunch and they're just sitting at these picnic tables and we're just kind of in the corner like yeah, when there's we- probably people that like thought like now i'm gonna go take my lunch <laughs> Started walk, walking that way. Heard you guys and said, "You know what? <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm not even hungry anymore. <laughs> yeah. I'd like to keep my lunch down today." <laughs> um, but you play bass, right? Bass guitar is that what it was? Yeah, played some bass, did a little backup vocals, played the cajon a little bit. So there you go. Yeah, sweet. My favorite part was the cajon when I literally just had a <laughs> beat the whole time. So. There we go. <laughs> All right, so Andy will be in a bar near you playing cover songs <laughs> that nobody wants to listen to. Yeah, yes. you got it. Um, so, yeah, uh, I'm hoping with all of this going on that the NFL season happens and continues throughout the whole year. Kind of a little bit worried that they're not going to a bubble situation. I don't know about you guys. Um, Baseball is keeps getting cases. They're right. not in a bubble. Right, and then the NHL did an awesome job. NBA did a pretty good job. I mean, they're having their own things going on right now, but it's like it just scares me. Especially, it's like the most 
context board out of all of these. Oh, know? yeah. So what did the NHL do? Yeah, they just went to a bubble. They're all playing. Oh, and, uh, they have a couple of different cities, though, right? Yeah, a couple of different cities. Um, there's just so many teams in each one, um, depending on what like conference you're in. So and and just just like the NBA, pretty much. But I feel like that would have been the move with the NFL. Like, or I don't know. What do you guys think? I was thinking like if they had like four hub cities, and mm-hmm. like they were they were all like four different bubbles. Um, they could have adjusted the schedule or kept the schedule the same, and like you're only allowed outside the bubble, unless like if you're traveling to one of the other bubbles, mm-hmm. like inner bubble transport only, basically, <laughs> only going between bubbles. Yeah. The thing with the NHL is they went dr- straight to a playoff qualifier and then the playoffs, so there wasn't as they didn't have to play as many teams as like the NBA kind of tried to like finish the season off and right. They, they, they had more really teams good, to really play. Good job of that. Right. Yeah. I think the biggest issue with the NFL is going to be the the size of the roster as well as just the amount of personnel included in every single team. You have more coaches on an NFL team, you have way more players, you have practice squad to worry about. I mean, the 53 man roster is not it's never set in I mean, stone. You have like 100 people per team at least. I mean, medical and, staff, yeah, everything. Yeah, just think about all the people per team and then just the people that make the games happen in general, even just all the the t- right. camera yeah, angles not, and ball boys, like just different things, like down on the field. It's, it's not four umpires like baseball has, it's, or right. Right. Many rep, four, um, two F, or four two, umpires, two, two ball boys, just to like collect the ball. <laughs> I mean, that's their job. <laughs> that's their job to collect to the balls, the ball boys. collecting balls. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, I don't. I think. What are you? What are predictions? How many games? Like I. Unfortunately, I don't think they're going to finish the se- like finish the season. Well, I mean, I didn't invite you here to be a Debbie Downer about the <laughs> NFL, but right. well, well, I mean, I don't know. In the Brown situation, that might be a good thing. <laughs> or here was my thing: it's like we're going to start off four or five and zero, and then they're going to shut down. Cancel the season. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, another five win season, but we that's all we played. <laughs> we're actually undefeated in that scenario. So I'll we it, yeah. we in Cleveland would probably crown ourselves like Super Bowl champions. Right. That. Oh, just, hell just yeah. how we are you know and right up there with the like 72 dolphins <laughs> Russ, right. and then they're them and then the five and oh browns yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean to this day people are still talking about the undefeated preseason champs i mean it started off as a joke but I, I i think we still hold it in our heart a little bit that we won four straight games but um that <laughs> yeah it's disappointing especially as like season ticket holders like uh, it's just something you look forward to all year and if for it to be like taken away it it hurts to not be able to go to the game especially i like just moved i'm like right down the street from the stadium and i don't know if the whole season shut down it would just i don't know it, it, that's what fall is for me you know right just like look all week i'm looking forward to the next game whether it be monday thursday uh, college football like I'm not as big of a college fan. I don't know about you guys, but it's something to do though. Like right, it's for part sure. of a Saturday, like I'll have a game on, not even really be watching it. Oh yeah. But there's a game on. Yeah. It, it, it could yeah. be two teams. I don't give a shit about, and right. it's just nice to have it on. But so anyway, I guess we can kind of move into like our expectations for the team itself. If we have a full season, um, what do you guys think? I mean, I guess we could eventually move into what uh, our record predictions. Um, but you guys know. think we're gonna finish finish the season? Oh yeah, I guess to backtrack. So, I like to think we will finish the season. I mean, if they start it, if you had to put money on it, would they finish it or yes, or finish it? Will they finish it or will they finish or yes. it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think I would put money on them finishing it. I mean, they've uh, the NFL and the NFL Players Association have been working together. You know, they have agreements in place. I'm sure they have enough taken care of as far as, you know, what the plan is if X number of players get COVID, right? And again, going back to the size of the NFL rosters, there are so many non-star players that are really, really relying on the money from the season that I think the NFLPA is going to do everything they can to make sure those guys get paid. And the easiest way to do that is to ensure the most games. So I think... 
because of money, they'll keep it going. Exactly. For both people. I think on both sides, the owners want that TV deal. Like, I mm-hmm. wonder not to, it's, we don't have to talk about it, but like when the NBA games get postponed and all of a sudden there's not a game airing, like how much money was just lost right there? Like, like if they get rid of half of the NFL season, like the owners are losing a ton of money. Right. The TV networks are losing money. The players are losing money. Mm-hmm. And it kind of makes you um, think about all of these cases you're hearing about, like Kevin Stefanski or testing positive for COVID. And like immediately after you hear, well, there's a bunch of like, false positives going on it's like that's what are I, there false positives I or that's what i was thinking too. are we like they're yeah. covering like could be covering it up like mm-hmm. at least like we can't do this right now like we're not gonna let everybody know that this might fail mm-hmm. so they're false positives now i yeah. would not put it past the nfl there's so much money it's the they, it has to be the biggest money maker out of all the pro sports oh, yeah. in america I think at least. So. yeah like baseball has you know 140 more games than NFL does on their schedule, but I would NFL has to be more. Oh yeah, like Monday Night Football gets more viewers mm-hmm. than any MLB game. I mean, the Super Bowl is like a holiday, like yeah. a, everywhere in the world. You know, everyone right. tunes in for it. So, um, I mean, that has a lot to do with it being one game, unlike a lot of other sports that have series. But still, it's just you know, it's got to make the most. Right. Um. So, what do you, would you put money on it then? I think they will finish the season. Yeah, I would put money on it. I mean, I'm I'm a gambler. Do you want to put money on it? Well, let me say, <laughs> I think there will be a Super Bowl champion. I'm not sure it's going to be a 16-game season. Here we go. See, I would, <laughs> I would almost argue, I, I think if, they're, if they don't finish, I think it's just going to stop and well, not continue. There's still a Super Bowl champion in the five and zero Cleveland Browns, like we had mentioned earlier, so yeah, there will be a. So you think if they get to nine games, the season gets canceled, they'll just stop at nine games, and then find a way or invite four teams to a playoff or something. I'm not sure. I know. I feel like if that was the um, route that they went, people would freak out. Oh yeah, like, like if, yeah. If you invited, I don't know, Seattle, San Francisco, Kansas and City, Kansas and like, City, yeah. and Cleveland. one other East Coast and the Browns. <laughs> To this, like this four games, like it'd be so close, like you'd be leaving out all these other teams. Yeah, and then they stretch it to eight, and then it's like, well, then why don't we just finish the season then if there are eight teams in this? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you also have to you also have to wonder about like money in Vegas that's been put on futures, you know, for Super Bowl champs. It would be tough for them to end the to sort of go to the playoffs mid season, you know, because then all those betters are going kind of like get killed. <laughs> I was going to say they're going to raise a stink, but. Somebody I think that's get, how they would raise that stink. Somebody would get killed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm usually one to bet with my heart and not my uh, my mind. So I think I would bet for the season to finish. But I mean, if it was a large sum of money, like ten thousand dollars, I would probably. I, I think I would bet that they would not. I wouldn't bet at that point. Well, yeah, that's help me out. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Uh, so you, have you guys been following the Browns training camp at all? Not We're as much as usual. Pessimistic already. <laughs> talk, going into negative talk. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I, I don't like to put too much into training camp. But they they do. They've had really good live coverage with Nathan Segura. And then uh, I think Josh Cribbs is on as well. What is it? Cleveland Browns Daily? Something like that, yeah. Shout out to Segura and Cribs. If you guys <laughs> listen to this, I'm yeah, sure right. they will. Yeah, but um, I don't know. It's just it's just a lot of like a uh, play will happen, and it's like Nick Chubb running the ball, and then, like and then getting dropped by a teammate, and he has a concussion. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, but no, it's it's just guys like touching them up, and they're like they're like and they're ripe, like Nick Chubb's a hard runner, but they're like, yeah, just look at the strength of him and like getting upfield. It's like. It's pretty easy to get up field when you know no one's like right. coming at you, right? I think Except they did for that Mac with, Wilson. Yeah, I think they did that with uh, did that. <laughs> they, did, they did that with uh, Odell yesterday. I think it was like he caught a screen pass and was dodging defenders. And obviously, especially after the Nick Chubb thing, like nobody's trying to tackle this guy, right? And they're like, look how elusive he is. <laughs> And it's like guys are pretty much standing there with their arms crossed, like, right, right? And Odell's like juking as if like, yeah, it's a Super Bowl <laughs> and everything's on the line. 
There, so. is, there is a highlight that everyone was like retweeting. I think it was to Odell, and Baker just throws this like fucking duck up in, into oh, double dude, into double one. coverage. Yeah, like, he's unguardable. He's unguardable. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> dude, he caught it over red wine. Right. <laughs> Shout out to Red Wine. If, if he, if he <laughs> Every old we talk about. <laughs> Shout out to uh, the Scottish Hammer. Don't want that guy to yeah. leave. But uh, yeah. Um, injuries. A lot injuries. of injuries. <laughs> There's there that like I have been following the Browns. Yeah. He you haven't been as much, but you're still aware that already this early on. And this is kind of what I wanted to talk about. How do you guys feel? I mean, our, we already lost our safety. Delpit, actually, last year, in a life of business in my other podcast, I mentioned that I wanted us to take him with our first round pick. Mm-hmm. Um, he was a projected like top 15 pick before the college season. Yeah. So the fact that we got him in the second round, like that was my guy. I was excited for him. I was excited we got him. Me too. Torn Achilles tendon. First week of training camp, he's gone. Mac yeah, Wilson. He's trash. ACL, yeah. It wasn't the Delpit that I put all my money on earlier. He's different. Uh, Mac Wilson, ACL, gone. Of course, we didn't re-sign our two linebackers. I, When it happened, I was kind of a fan of that move just because, like, Schobert and Kirksey, like, we didn't re-sign them. How did you guys feel about that? I mean, hindsight, like, it's terrible, you know. Right, when, the- right when it happened, how did you feel right when it happened? Um... I, I had mixed feelings, honestly, at the time. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I had confidence that we were going to save a little bit of money and do big things with it. It's just one of those things that they'll go out and make like a fancy pickup, and then you're like, okay, like we're we're gonna be okay. And then you, it's you see the offense really start to like build up and uh, see how strong they could be, and you kind of ignore that, and you're like, and you're like, in the draft we can draft a few guys, you know. Right, and then I mean, save money so we could sign Miles right to the big deal. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I still yeah. think Schobert was cheap enough that we, I would have signed him. I would have kept him. Yeah, I mean, good culture guy too. Especially right. that's kind of what the Browns need at this point, like respected leader and all that. So yeah, even with Kirksey, I mean, he was injured a lot, but when he played, he was a great addition to the team. We just and, never had like that sideline to sideline guy when. Have we ever had that? Dwayne Rudd? <laughs> uh, Willie McGinnis, maybe? Yeah, when he was 40. Shout out. <laughs> Shout out to Willie. <laughs> if you're listening. <laughs> but we've never liked them. Like Kendrell Bell, Joey Porter, um, Larry Foote. Like, these are all Pittsburgh guys. Ray Lewis. Any of these guys. Like they, And now they have Devin Bush. Yeah, like mm-hmm. a mean middle linebacker that is just sideline to sideline, 120 tackles. We've I don't know if we've ever had that. Like a dominant linebacker. Who is uh, man, who is the linebacker we had for the longest time? Dwayne Rudd. No, <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, Dwayne Jimmy Rudd. Miller? If you Jimmy are listening, Miller. ah, no, I can't remember him. When was he? Uh, when was he on the team? This is a while ago. I want to say early, not early, later 2000s. Not sure we had for a long time. A long time. Oh, I'll think Look of that it. up on your yeah. laptop. Yeah, Dequell Jackson is uh, the name we were looking for. Yep. Watching some nice hits from him right now. Look at that, dude. Mm. He tackled someone. Boom. What a guy. He was here and... But again, like that's kind of the same thing I guess we were just talking about. Like, Arguably our best linebacker we've had since the return in 99. And we couldn't even think of his name. <laughs> I mean that that one's on us, I think. But well, I don't know. I mean, I had multiple of. I could come up with good linebackers from almost probably every other team in the NFL. Right before one I because thought. they had they stayed there, like you said before, for a while, and I mean they were dominant linebackers, not just some like not to downplay Dequell, 
um, or anything like that, or Andre Davis early on. Like, it just wasn't like that dominant linebacker that you would want. I don't know. I mean, I think he was dominant enough, but the team was borderline irrelevant. Trash. For a few years. I mean, <laughs> outside of for, Cleveland, yeah. you know, we were just the butt of jokes, and that was about it. We had... For the butthole of the world, is that what... Who, uh, what the, was that from? The mayor of Cleveland, called Cleveland, the uh, butthole yes. of the world. Good old Frank Jackson. <laughs> yeah. Shout out to Frank Jackson. Yeah. If he's watching. Yeah. You guys ever, uh, <laughs> you ever watch Community? Not for years. No. Uh, okay. Well, they're like, their school flag, like the logo, like looks like a butthole. <laughs> I was thinking that's what we just need to change I mean, the Cleveland. For a new logo, for, yeah. or Brown's logo for a while. <laughs> Remember that? How about that when just they hyped more, up the new uh, logo? Yeah. Right. And we were all like waiting for it. And they have these <laughs> like badass Browns, con- like the Brownie off concept or a, a bulldog, like eating a football or something. Right. And then they gave us a helmet <laughs> and chain- like made it a brighter orange with a brown face yeah. mask. <laughs> the orange is orange. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, so are the- I guess just going back, talking about the defense, um, I-, I know you wanted to. Yeah, I mean, our, I was, I guess, Alex, I will ask you, since um, you're also a season ticket holder, much like Andy, so you have a lot to say on this. Um, how do you feel? I know Miles Garrett. Is it accurate to say he's your favorite player? He is my favorite player, yes. Okay. Are you aware he's the only good player on our defense? <laughs> well, I guess Ogan Joby. Yeah, he's Larry's good. pretty like good. Um, I think some pro football focused stats go against him, but. Um, Stats don't matter when it's it comes all, to the Browns. Yeah, <laughs> he's a he's a solid Brown. I like him. I mean, so we've got, how do you feel about our offense being stacked and our defense not really being addressed outside of signing Garrett to a huge deal? I which mean, I, I love think, that move, by the way. I think the defense will be okay. Um, we are ranked thirty first, and this was a week ago before we lost two of our starters. That's okay. <laughs> I like our uh, I like our cornerbacks. I like our chances. I like our cornerbacks a lot. So um, you're saying there's a chance. Yeah. Do you like the cornerbacks? As Andy and I were just talking about this. So I think they have a lot of potential. Which ones? Which ones? Which cornerbacks? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> what? Who? I mean, greedy and greedy Denzel. And Denzel. Yeah. I mean, they're uh, they're what two young the talents. Guy? Who's our nickelback? I don't even know. <laughs> Get the roster up on this TV. <laughs> <laughs> so you do like Denzel and Greedy. Yeah, so they're actually two players that I was expecting a jump from this year. Um, I think Denzel has shown he can do it when he's healthy. I wish he could tackle a little better. I wish he could tackle a little uh, safer, you know? I wish he could she... tackle. It would be nice if he could catch. I wish our... <laughs> if he works on his defending the receivers. That yeah, if he could cover catch. a little. No, those two are, um, I think our defense will live and die by the cornerbacks. I need Greedy to make a big jump. Uh, Denzel can play. They both really Kevin just Johnson. need to. Stay healthy. Who I is think. That? Kevin Johnson. We have another Kevin Johnson. He was on yeah, the all-decade It's actually the same guy. <laughs> yes. 47-year-old corner. <laughs> Switch positions. <laughs> okay. So, oh, Terrence Mitchell's on the team. How old is he nowadays? I don't know, but he's questionable on this list. Okay. So, I mean, I don't know. I think... So, both of our, our corners have shown Denzel more so than Greedy. Denzel has shown like he can be like a shutdown corner or what you could hope one day will be shut down. And but neither of them have shown that they're great at tackling. Den- Denzel North. had some issues staying on the field last year too, which yeah, yeah. I mean, they were greedy, both out for six weeks in a row or something with hamstring injuries. Mm-hmm. So and our linebackers. Um I liked the Jacob Phillips. Uh, pick up, but we get him in the third round. Mm-hmm. He actually led LSU in tackles last year. I don't remember the name of the LSU linebacker that got drafted in the first round um, this year, but the, Jacob Phillips actually led the team in tackles over that guy that was a first round pick. Mm-hmm. So that to me was encouraging. And we see he's still second on the depth chart right now. But so, so maybe this is the Browns fan in me, but um, it is for you guys watching. We're looking at the roster here. How are we 31st in the NFL with that? Defensive line. Because the uh, linebackers and safeties. Yeah, I mean, look at the I mean, front sure, four. But but the front four you, are very strong. So, I mean, the quarterbacks just, have a ton of potential. And, I mean, I don't know. I had huge hopes for Delpit, and I wish that they would do something about Earl Thomas now that he's out there. 
Yeah, Eric I would Barry. love that I don't signing. know the Eric Berry situation, but I thought when Dorsey was our GM that he would make a move there to bring in Eric Berry from KC. Um, yeah. I mean, we just don't have it. I mean, you made the joke about, well, not even a joke, but you mentioned Willie McGinnis. I just took it as a joke. Um, like the aging like star defensive player. Yeah. Um, Earl Thomas, I feel like, is still to the point where he could dominate a game. I mean, he's not going to come in and hurt the defense. Yeah, you know, I it mean, would only help. And you know, especially now, he could be angry about Baltimore cutting him. So what happened? I saw he was late to a practice and he punched a teammate? Allegedly. <laughs> According to the video I watched, yes, he punched So Earl him. Thomas, if you're, uh, <laughs> yeah. if you're out, listening Earl. to this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he punched one of his teammates. I mean, that happens every year in camp. I don't... Something, it, there's got to be more to the story. Yeah, I mean, other teams have already denied interest and everything like that. But, I mean, X, X raven you know, he comes from a division rival. He's got that insider information. It reminds me of Joe Hayden, kind of. Totally. And he's been great for the Steelers. I would. Yeah, I hate that he's playing there. I, I would it. sign on to an Earl Thomas. Earl Thomas. Uh, it's signing. time for Earl Thomas. Earl Thomas. <laughs> Earl Thomas. Earl Thomas, it's time. <laughs> it's Earl time. Yes. So, um, so I, I feel like... Sorry, go ahead. No, no, no. I was just going to say, I feel like we have this high-powered offense. I actually got Madden this year, which I, nice. I didn't think I was going to do. But the only reason I got it is I feel like this could be one of the last. And it's a very pessimistic view, but our offense is stacked right now. This could be one of the last years that we actually have a talented roster together like this. Like Our offense is just, I don't know. I just feel, I don't know, man. I mean, this might be our best offense since like we, that's, it's, 07. Should, should not, be, honestly. I, I don't want to knock any of the guys that we're looking at on defense here obviously all of them can play football better than all of yeah. us but it's like then you scroll up to the offense oh my gosh and yeah. it's just like our backup and here is one of my hot takes i love baker um i think like if if case keenum was to come in we'd be just as good if not better just because he's a veteran presence um better i don't i i don't know i mean we'll have to see what the jump that baker makes yeah but like case keenum like if he was to come in i don't think things would slow down necessarily but i'm just saying looking at this like look at our, our second string running back kareem hunt obviously we have two pro bowl receivers I, the hooper signing again last year i mentioned that i wanted us to get him um and then harrison bryant don't sleep on that the tight end he won the what it was it the Mackey award mm-hmm. tight end of the year yeah florida yeah. atlantic shout out boca raton florida <laughs> uh i used to live there yeah i mean like, we're stacked on offense i mean our line was shored up which is huge and i do have concerns about wyatt teller but um i mean we went from four weak spots in the line to one so i mean jack conklin i forgot about that i mean the rest of the line could start on any team in the nfl i think so i mean we still have to see with judrick but (laughs) right yeah and i mean yeah and joe like harrison bryan again and then and joku like who knows there but he's made plays before yeah, a lot of people have been like down on Njoku, but I'm glad that they got him to sign. I don't know if that was due to no interest outside, or I mean, not sign, but uh, he was requesting like, a trade at yeah, one point. Right. And um, yeah, I don't know. I'm I'm, I'm glad he's here. I think he's gonna I th- um realize that he's gonna be open a lot more. They're gonna be running a ton of two tight end sets. So yeah, I mean, he should be open. You know, yeah, with all of these. Now, right? Mm-hmm. Like we're implementing the fullback again. Yeah, wait, who's the fullback? Um, I don't remember. He's the, what was the, the thing with him? Who is it? What's that guy's name? He was, I mean, he was in Minnesota with Stefanski, right? Uh, yeah, I think so. I mean, you even saw it with uh, San Francisco. They have the guy who's from Lodi. Uh, mm. What's his name? Um, I can't remember, but he's like played a huge role in their Super Bowl run. Like they had running backs in and out all season, and he was the f- lead fullback the whole time. I mean, it's going to be huge because, I mean, just look at how many times we couldn't get the ball. I mean, that's part of that's coaching, but how can you not get one of the best running backs in the league in on four plays from the one-yard line? There's no excuse. Yeah. So they had to do something there. Halfback pass. Right. <laughs> I mean, and obviously the receivers are deep as hell. I, am. I like the Peoples Jones. Me too. Me too. And he was the best receiver in that in his high school class. He was number one. I, I saw that. So he was, he was like, and then obviously he didn't. He was between Ohio State and Michigan. Mm-hmm. He chose 
Michigan. He chose wrong. Um, <laughs> so I did see, I don't remember the guy's name, but it was an NFL. He's one of the guys that does his own scouting and puts out the reports. He actually said that Donovan Peoples Jones had no place in the NFL. He was pure, really? purely an athlete with no um, actual football skill at all. He was like the only like highlight of that offense. He was. I completely disagree with the guy, yeah. but I mean. Dude, he had Shea Patterson throwing him the ball and he remained relevant. Right, exactly. Are you willing to um, no. attack Michigan right now? Are you? Uh, I've been on the fence about them for a while. Just, I don't know. When I was living in Florida, every time I would mention I was from Ohio, somebody would mention the Buckeyes. And it kind of made me feel like, damn, like I'm missing out on this, like being like that's the only good team we have yeah. outside of the Cavs 2016. Shout out LeBron and Kyrie. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, I had a little phase when I was younger that I was like a Yankees fan. I was oh, an Indians right. fan, went to rooting for the Yankees for a little while. My favorite player was Derek Jeter, so right. it kind of just happened. I watched you on the Reds. I, it, would, it seemed like you modeled your game yeah, a little bit. Heavy. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Um, the, the way he would go and kind of separate himself on the bench from like his teammates. That's what I modeled my whole game after. We just did it to you instead of you doing it to (laughs) us. It it was forced upon me. He's batting 117. (laughs) Nobody stand by him. (laughs) He's just sitting over there giggling. (laughs) We don't know why, but, um, (laughs) um, what was I even saying? I can't even remember. Oh, oh I was a, Michigan, Ohio yeah, State. yeah. So I was a Yankees fan, and it was when LeBron went to the Indians game. Dumb move with with the, the with the Yankees hat, and he's holding it up. And I was like, you know what? No, nah. I was like, that ain't it. I, I'm from Cleveland. I'm gonna root for Cleveland teams, and I think it's a little bit different with college teams, honestly. Sure. Um, like if I root for Ohio State, but it's like I didn't go to Ohio State. So I mean, we all Kent State all day. If it was Ohio State, right? Kent State was yeah. This two. is a Kent go State podcast, yeah. baby. Yeah. One for three on graduation, but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, a Kent thirty three percent's pretty good. Yeah, it'll get you by. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the fourth years for the birds. You don't need that fourth year. You don't learn anything. Right. (laughs) Uh, But um, I guess we can kind of move on. Do you guys want to do the classic uh, going through? We'll go through the schedule. We are, how long, 15 minutes into? I'm glad you're keeping track because I forgot again. It was 719. Yeah. Okay. So Uh, Before we go to the schedule, if we could, I did have another player. That I wanted to discuss my oh, yeah, expectations have, uh, for, like players yeah, to look out too, for. Too Old little, golf. too late. Sorry. Oh, uh, yeah. You can look, look out for him. No, go, look out for him week one against the Ravens. Who <laughs> <you guys. laughs> Guy to look out for the Scottish Hammer. He is a player I have. Uh, <laughs> okay, <laughs> move it. No, just, <laughs> the punter. All right. <laughs> no, no, no. Week uh, one. <laughs> I think we've. I think we found. I think we found a gem in the scottish I, hammer here you know what i can't do again though i can't have the favorite pl- the best player your favorite player on the team the most reliable guy be a the special kicker, teams yeah. player i won't stand for any attacks on phil dawson no 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 no, no, no. I mean, we lo- dawson, everyone loves phil dawson i mean who was uh we had colquitt for not zastadil like he was yeah. a pro bowler no no, no. who was gardaki was our punter gardaki. for a long yeah um, we love so, our kickers here and then we but then really our do. other like best player like we have the kicker Dawson, and then our Pro Bowl punters, and then you could argue our best weapon since we've come back was our kick returner. Kick returner, yeah. Josh Cribbs, like right. <laughs> you could argue that, yeah, yeah. Like that's that's a good argument. Like who's been our best player since we've been? I mean, Joe Thomas. Um, I I think it would be Joe Thomas, but like the best playmaker, the best player since we've came back. Yeah, I can't people really were, count the offensive uh, line. No, I mean not. at that point, people were going to the games to see Josh Cribbs return kicks and that felt dude as kent state a single yeah. alumni we were vindicated it yeah. was it was to the point Julian where edelman james harrison josh cribs antonio, antonio gates, gates. Antonio gates yeah. <laughs> he didn't even play on the football team though didn't he no he was just basketball <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's insane but uh literally yeah people would go to the game to watch him return kicks and then they start throwing him in at quarterback yeah. you know he got headhunted as a wide receiver but not good, not a good wide receiver. But that was when he wasn't a good the writer. wildcat was a thing, right? And we would put <laughs> and him in. Actually, when I was like my fr- when I was a freshman at Kent, 
Edelman was our quarterback. Mm. So that was cool to see. Um, obviously, none of our players stick to the position Dude, that they are in college. It, we right? should have just played quarterback when we went. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. Might not be here talking about it. We might. So your player yeah. to look out for. All right, we'll do that. Yours is the, the, punter. the punter. Well, I already dropped my two were Denzel and Greedy, who I was expecting a big jump for. But um, our boy, the Scottish Hammer. I brought some stats here. All right. If you guys are, inter- are interested. Average 46 yards per punt. 46. <laughs> Point two is yards really? per punt would put him in the top ten. <laughs> I did not look at that. that was, <laughs> I watched every one of his punts last year. I did the math in my head. And uh, we know <laughs> there's, there's we room, know his stats. There's room for improvement. <laughs> there is room for improvement. This was his first year punting in the league. He was 13th overall in punts landed within the uh, 20 yards. Right. It doesn't matter. Dude. That we was just went over our defense. It doesn't matter where these punts land. But I think our offense will actually. Allow Give him the to ball drop back more. He has a chance. <laughs> no, no. Our, our better offense will allow him to drop more punts within the twenty, which will be better for our a better slightly offense slimmer will defense. Let him punt the ball more. We'll punt the ball from a better position we, when we we're need, punting. We need to get this guy I mean, the ball. We're going to score more for sure, but we'll also be punting from better spots. We need to punt more one yard from the first yeah, down marker like, instead I mean, of fifteen. If it's, out, yards. If it's outside of the ten yard line, you might as well put him in the red zone. With yeah. the defense we have. I mean, we've had good. We've had a lot of good punters. Yeah, like dude, it's because they're I on the field all the time. I know. Like, Maybe I'm guy, wrong, and the, the punters in, are not the key to winning. But I, in his first uh, year, Britain Colquitt was sick. Right. Yeah. But everyone forgets about Britain, and the, the, they was, punt so much, and they well, don't saying, don't want to pay guy, them anymore. In his first and then they year, go somewhere probably else. had more practice punting last year than any other first year punter. I would like to see I that stat. Yeah. Like who he probably had the most punts as a rookie punter ever. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh no offense, but I can't talk any longer. Who's about your player to watch out the for? Punter. Pick one. Um I would like to talk about Taki Taki. Um how many days ago did you write that joke, Andy? Actually a few <laughs> minutes ago. Yeah, <laughs> I said it like, in the uh, bathroom. Yeah. But um the little Taki Taki Taki. <laughs> my fear is every time there's that guy that they're like he's very versatile and he can play multiple positions that usually doesn't work out in the nfl he's so just, that's he's a, a project he'll get there yeah those guys <laughs> right right that never get there. um but uh, he was kind of playing a different position than what he was playing in college and they got him because he was a really good tackler yeah. and I, I think that's something the browns could really use especially in the like like second level and it, they, he was used a lot as an edge guy so right. i think if they can kind of put him there last year he was more of a pure linebacker the few games that he did play or get in but that um, poor guy being an nfl linebacker right and being forced in to play linebacker <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> right but i, I feel you? like if they can if they can mix him up get him in a position where he has a chance to make plays um i mean they need someone like that to step up unless they make a big move or at this point right i mean what are you really going to do uh, so uh, like my guy would be either Higgins or Peoples Jones, whoever wins the spot for that third receiver. Yeah, I mean now that I, Freddie's I, I think gone, it's, uh, go ahead. Now that Freddie's gone, I think Higgins. What the hell needs to shine? Something must have been going on. Hooper Hooper could have a huge year too. I mean, he I'm, yeah, balled out in Atlanta. Yeah, he's young. He's what, like twenty four. Like he's still a young yeah. tight end. I'm just happy. Yeah. Like we have a tight end that can catch the ball and block. You know, that, right. that's huge. Play the whole position like a young Steve Hyden. Steve, <laughs> God, the Browns. Shout out the, to Steve. The Steve yeah. Hyden. Who was the other one? Shea, yeah. Aaron Shea. Yeah, yeah. That combo, and everyone <laughs> loved that combo. The Browns always have good tight ends because they never have like quarterbacks like that nobody, can throw like to receivers. Open up, Hyden's open five yeah. yards downfield. <laughs> And they throw it to them where they're not open anymore, and they're making these crazy catches, and everyone's like, "Oh, like this tight end is so sick. nasty." Yeah. yeah. Like he has three catches for forty four yards, and he's like, yeah. we'll put him on a pedestal. <laughs> <laughs> the Browns tight ends really do like get put on this pedestal. It's like, like I don't know. We Ben Watson was huge here, like another, a player, another aging star. Yeah, yeah. Who went on to age even further with the, the Saints? Most yeah, people do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, no, I mean, <laughs> if they're lucky. NFL, yeah. uh, <laughs> yeah. they, they usually, one if you're an aging star or an aging player, and you come here. That's where you die. You don't go on to win a Super Bowl with somebody it, else. It's after the after you retire where yeah, you yeah, don't usually. age anymore. 
All right, so Sorry. we're gonna go through concussion <laughs> joke. <laughs> Where are we on? on uh, Shout out, never mind. I can't say that. <laughs> Junior Seau. <Yeah. laughs> if hey, you're watching, he did it for science. Man. <laughs> if you're listening, yeah, he's up there. He was one of my favorite players, man, on the Chargers. Mm-hmm. He was big on the Jersey. That's well. what I was gonna say. The oh Jersey, yeah, the show. No one remembers that show, man. No, I that was a great the show. Show yeah. with the hockey. Who am I? I'm what is his name, Myron Defoe or something? I don't know. Like the yeah, hockey player. Yeah. I don't know who the hell it was, but I remember the commercial. You remember the one uh, where they they're like, if you if you wash the jersey, like you go in and you're really good. You know? Yeah. Do you see that one? It's like, why haven't you guys been <laughs> washing this jersey for three seasons? <laughs> I know? mean, if I put a jersey on, if I put a jersey on one time and I turned in to a, to a professional player, I wouldn't wash it. I wouldn't want to risk it. That's true. I mean, that's true. It was like an old ass jersey, wasn't it? Yes, it was like brittle. A hockey jersey, it was there was a little. If you find a magical jersey, yeah. you don't wash the jersey, man. Someone washed it. And it's a big risk. I didn't wash my Braylon Edwards jersey all of 2007. I didn't wash it. I and then I washed. I have not it, washed this yet. He well, he still was dropping passes in 07, but 08 he set records. Yeah. <laughs> all right, let's uh, get into this a little bit. All right, what time we got? Uh, 7:41. Got eight minutes. All right, who wants? To go? <laughs> so, I mean, all right. Do so you guys we, want to go game by game, or do you want I think to? Let's go game by game. Okay, and we'll just all go, and then you want to keep track of it. Somebody? No, I, I really don't. All right, it doesn't matter. No, I'm, I'm joking. You want to keep track? You got the I mean, I have us at thirteen and three, like I do every year. I don't know how it's going to play out yeah. when we're going through this, but I'll get to thirteen and three. <laughs> Um, Washington see. football team. O- Orange is home, I assume. Orange is away. That's dumb. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's a really bright orange. Yeah, it's oranger than previous years. The orange yeah. is and orange. Shout out to the New Jerseys, too. Gotta love them. Um, quickly, speaking of New Jerseys, what do you guys think of New Jersey? <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, of the gin what? house in New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> what do you guys think of uh, the Redskins? kits i actually haven't seen them i don't mind them i actually think they're kind of cool yeah i think the washington football team obviously they're gonna have to change it easy with that andy but wait yeah what do you what'd you call them dude oh i mean (laughs) the uh washington football team wp those are pretty classic actually i like them yeah and it was smart i didn't even think about this um i don't know maybe you were saying this but it's a whole year where they can make all this money off that merchandise that people are going to want because it's like a once in a lifetime thing. Right. Sure. We can't get into all that, but it'd be like, I don't know, the new Indians gear. Like when that drop, what if we have to change our name and all that? Like they're going to make a ton of money on that gear. Um, so Washington, like this is huge because yeah. all year you're going to be selling this stuff and the next year double down and sell brand new stuff again. Yeah. Also, potentially, you have Adrian Peterson's. Mm. Final final year jersey, which could be mm. you know a good uh, yeah. good piece to have. Yeah. Uh, quickly, one word answers. What name do you want for the Indians if they have to change it? Go ahead, Alex. <laughs> the Rocks. I like the Damn. Rockers, but I also like the Cleveland Grays. Oh, I just want the Rocks. Grays like the isn't Rockers. bad. I like the Rockers better. better I kind of I kind of like the Guardians. I do like the Guardians. I think like, the logo could be cool. It kind of sounds like the Indians. Deans. <laughs> I mean, you could go with a lot of things. They'd have Ian's. I mean, I don't know if anything sounds better than Cleveland Rocks, personally. Dude, we've already the got. Cleveland Rocks. Yeah, but that's kind of like cheesy. We've already got a like, song about it. And, like, frankly, and what are I don't we know. Drew like, Carey is the logo. Yeah. I don't know what don't, those Guardians I like even the Cleveland protect. Rockers. If what it are they guarding? The traffic. Guardians but nobody, of traffic. Yeah, but nobody uh, outside of Cleveland knows that. So, like the spiders, was, everyone knows Cleveland rocks. Also, like the hey, Rockers, hey, we was, don't need a name that has to do with the city. You know how many teams have names that have nothing to do with the city? There's a lot. The Grays, though, that's not bad. I think that was I haven't the, heard the, Grays, the Negro but. League team, if I remember right. It was, I think, like from the early 1900s. It'd be cool if they could do something with like, like Larry Doby or something, but I don't want to be like the Dobies. The Dobes. All right, Cleveland, Cleveland Larrys. Cleveland Larrys, yeah. Cleveland uh, Bob, are you ready? Bob Feller. I'm ready. Okay, we'll just go. We only have four minutes. 
Perfect. Okay. Looking at the schedule here, Beef, uh, you're going to keep track of this then? Uh, yeah, I can do that. Okay. Um, you ready? Let's rock. Let me uh, reach my beer. <laughs> Got one there and two ready for me. So do you guys want to go game by game? Yeah. With each of us, or do we want to go... Uh, no, no, no. I mean, well, what do you guys want to do? Yeah, we'll go. Uh, go game by game. Game by game. Well, yeah. game by game, like one at a time. Just yeah. game, and we yeah, all we'll say... Week one, Okay. who's going to... That makes sense to me. It. Yeah. All right. Week one, we have the Ravens away. Uh, Logan, why don't we start with you? Loss. No explanation. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the Cleveland Browns are going to win that game. I mean, every part of me wants to say they're going to win, but right. if I'm actually trying to accurately do this, no, they're not going to win. Um, I'm going to agree with you. Um, with who? Yeah, that's for the fans to determine. So, am I marking that down as a win or a loss? No, that, gonna that's do? a. Uh, I, I'm going to get. I, that's a loss. I like to think that they pull it off. Right. Like, right. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like there, I don't know. This happened last year. Like you can go into each one of these games, and there's a case to be made that they're going to win. I mean, we remember we, Week Four in Baltimore, right? Past season in Week One, any anyone can win. I mean, how confident were we? I mean, although it's rarely the Browns, <laughs> <laughs> how confident were we that we were just going to steamroll the Tennessee Titans? Yeah, we were. Uh, we were walking into that stadium like fucking Conor McGregor. Like, let's go get a fucking W real quick. <laughs> Start off one and zero. The Ravens did that same thing in the playoffs when they ran into Tennessee. Tennessee. Yeah. I mean, Tennessee I mean, was. We good. lost to the pre Tannehill Titans, though. That was right. That was a dark loss. Oh, okay, uh, we'll move so, on. All right. Week, Week two, home versus the Bengals. That's a win. Thursday night game. Oh yeah. I mean, it doesn't matter now, really. Thursday night. It's at around. night, and it's on a Thursday. I'm so just gonna mark be, W's for all of us. I think. I mean, is anyone thinking we lose to week two? Just as Hell well, just no. as much as Joey I could Burrow. think that we could win that. Like where I'm, like part of me thinks that we could win that Baltimore game. Then there's the other side of week two where it's like this would be one that we lose. Right. I mean, any given <laughs> Sunday, but if if we won, if we game, won week so one, I, I think we would lose week two. But I don't think that's happening. I think we we're losing week one. Coming back week two. I think we the, start the, out at least two and zero. Okay, that's what you got. Is mark them down. I'm all right. So we all uh, got yeah. us winning week two against the Bengals. Mm-hmm. Week three. Uh, I'll start on this one. The Washington Football Team. Um, <laughs> uh, the we're gonna win that for sure. Go ahead. Yeah, we're gonna win that game. Although I think AP rushes for over 120 yards. I think that's... Who's their quarterback? That's cute, but... Is Alex Smith back yet? So Alex Smith is, is back. He's, he's been cleared? I'm not sure if he's the starter yet. I don't think he's cleared for yet. contact yet, has he? He's been cleared for football activities. Yeah, I don't know if he's cleared to take hits. So who... Oh, so he's so he'll probably hands. start against the Browns, huh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're safe. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's Dwayne Haskins. All right, we win that one. Okay. So we're uh, I've got us at three and zero. You guys have us at two and one each. Well, we'll we'll just say what it is at the well, end. Here's where things yeah. get interesting. Just, Week four at Jerry World. Yeah. No fans. No fans at these games. Right. That's got that's got to be weird in like a Jerry closed World. arena. Yeah, well, they've got they're going to come up with something for oh, of course like pump fan. They do it at baseball games, but football you have to turn that up. I mean, I Atlanta was doing that. Dude, a couple I know, years ago, right? They were doing it anyways. The, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the the baseball things sound bad enough where they like still do the like charges and stuff. Yeah. Football has already has really cringy like like come on dog pound and they're still gonna be playing those things with oh, no yeah. one there and it's gonna sound bad. Like but, recorded. Here we go, brownies. Here yeah. we go. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I'm, at Jerry World. Week four. Um, I'm gonna go. Uh, uh, we're gonna struggle early, so I, I think we're gonna lose. I um, I think we're gonna lose. 
I also think we're going to lose that game. Oh, yeah. Is that your first loss of the my first loss of the year? All right, let's move on. Uh, we have home against the Colts. Philip Rivers. Philip Rivers. I'll uh, I'll start. I think um. I think the wily old vet is going to get the better of us, uh, get mm-hmm. the best of us, and uh, hand us another L, two in a row. We're going to win that one. I think we're going to win. <laughs> yeah. Phillip Rivers is going to be outshined by a young Baker Mayfield in this game. This is going to be Baker's biggest game. Wow. Of the season or to this point? To this point. Okay. Like a, a, you, like a comeback you don't think win? he's going to shred the Bengals? Or are you talking stats or a, a legacy win? No, all on, all man. around. If we're talking a Browns quarterback, don't use the word legacy. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, yeah, yeah, all around. I think he's gonna have the the biggest stats this week. I think we're going to get up on the Bengals and kind of just tread lightly the rest of the game, like a twenty four thirteen win. Yeah, but it, it was like clearly the Browns had control the whole time, but it was yeah twenty four thirteen fourth quarter TD, and you're thinking shit. Here we go. Yep, they're coming back. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, that, that'll right, be his. So I think yeah, well, that'll be a comeback win. I think that's my take on the Colts game. It'll be a comeback win. Wow. Um, moving on to the Steelers away at Heinz Field. That's a win. That's a win for sure. <laughs> yeah. I, I I don't know. I mean, I'll just say it here. I have a sweeping. We're, we're me too. We're sweep the yeah. Steelers. I, I I don't even think it's gonna be. Now as we go through this list, I don't know. You know, guys, I'm sorry. I say it out loud, and it's like, it sounds stupid. We're not going to beat them twice. I, um, we didn't really get into like division expectations before we got into this, but I'm a little worried about the Steelers this season. Um, they didn't have Ben. They had a huge, huge drop-off. I think Ben's going to get... their backup racist quarterback. And I think Big Ben might have himself a year. Wait, did you say racist or rapist? Uh, so the racist was last year. And uh, they're going back to the peak. Oh, the bat! You said back up racist. Yes. Okay. Starting yes, rapist. Uh, this year. This year. Correct. Um, and yeah, I think the Steelers with that they've got a they've got a good defense. They're young. And I think Tomlin they have an old defense too with Joe Hayden who dominates us. Yeah, he tends to. Devin, I mean, Devin I think Bush. I think I think Tomlin um, has himself a squad, and I'm a little worried about the Steelers this year, and that's why I'm going to hand us. The third loss in a row. Here's a fantasy Uh-oh. take. I think James Conner is going to have a bad year. I don't know who their backup running back is. I think he's going to. I mean, slow he was down. pretty bad last year. Yeah, I think he's he. I don't, him replacing Le'Veon Bell gave him a little boost right away, but I think they're just a different team. All right. Wait. So you think that we're going to lose that game? I do. Wow. Are you even a Browns fan? We're we're going to win that one, and uh, that'll take us into Week Seven. In we, which I think we lose to the Bengals. At, okay. In, dude, if Joey no, Burrow, think, I don't care. List, hear me out. As a Browns fan, say we do win that Pittsburgh game. Do you do you think we would win two? I did say we do. I know, but game. I'm. Uh, you probably, I'm sure, have us winning. I'm just saying, I would watch out for us losing this game here. Um, right, right after the Steelers. Right, game. If we beat the Steelers, we'll be flying high. We're going to the playoffs. And then we lose to Cincinnati. That is... I have us losing that game. Yeah. And you ask me if I'm a Browns fan? This guy has us losing to those. I'm such a Browns fan that I'm realistic that if we win the arguably the biggest game of the season, week six, realistic. at Pittsburgh, then we follow it up. Since when are Browns night. fans realistic? I'm going to give us a win. Okay, I, I have us win as well. Um, Week eight... Wait, that was the second and final game. I'm surprised they didn't spread the Bengals games out a little more, yeah. personally, with the two young quarterbacks. I right. mean, all these division games are pretty exciting. I think exciting, Burrow could have, like, Burrows? Joe Burrow. Burrow. Singular. Uh, you could have, like, a Baker Mayfield-like rookie season. Like, this would be yeah. one of his big wins, is beating mm-hmm. the Browns. That's yeah. what I'm just saying. I, I, mean, I could we, see it. I, I'm just I think not going to... We'll prob- we might win... I hope you guys are right. I'm just saying we could lose. Um, I think you're dead wrong. That's fine. No. Right, week eight. <laughs> week eight. We got the Las Vegas Raiders. Ooh, almost Las at Oakland. Vegas Raiders. We don't get to go to their new stadium though. It is at home. Their stadium looks 
Oh, actually, I have no idea what their stadium looks like. From the outside, Did, it looks, I haven't seen it. <laughs> Did you see the season ticket holder things everyone got, though? No. Yeah. They're badass. Yep. They're like the inaugur- inaugural season ticket things. They're they're. You guys awesome. got socks last year, right? We got some socks. We got socks, and we got gloves. Shitty gloves, man. They bad gloves. they do you know they're like texting gloves. Oh, are they smart? They gloves? do work. Okay. You know how a lot of them don't. Yeah. They work. They don't keep your hands warm. Uh, yeah, I was. But I you was can text while you by use the, them by the gloves. Or you can go Browns <laughs> when you do that. I think it's it might be backwards too. So it's like probably. Um, week nine Maybe by week. Backwards. Wait, wait, what did we all say? Raiders. I'm going to say we. It's a win. I think we actually lose. I think we're supposed to win. I think we lose. I could see the Raiders being okay this year. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Carr has been really roasted the last two years, and I think he's going to have a comeback Undeserved. season. I don't think it's deserved. He... No, I don't think so. Yeah, they, I although, mean, they got rid of his best weapon. Mm-hmm. I, although I don't think uh, Jacobs has a big year, personally. No, he was... Uh, Talk fantasy. I am so glad I had him last year. Yeah. That was a huge pick. I think he's going to have a down year, but I also think the one good game he has is going to be against the Cleveland Browns. They're going to feed him and tear us apart. Dude, with Taki Taki at linebacker? I don't think so. Yeah. I'm going to I'm gonna give us a loss on there. It's hard to do, but yeah. And then we go into the bye week. Loss. <laughs> somebody gets arrested. Yeah. yeah somebody's going to break quarantine. Right. <laughs> Honestly, bye weeks are scary cuz you're like what are what are they doing, you know? Especially during this. They should make them all stay in Berea. That sucks. That's like <laughs> <laughs> Like you're quarantined in Berea. <laughs> you know, I like that we have a mid-season bye. Uh it seems like sometimes we get them really late or really early. We had like a week this four is, by recently, didn't did. we, or something? Yeah. Mm-hmm. That, that was, was why we went one and 15. L's, L's the rest that's, of the way. That's yeah. why we went one and 15. Um, week 10, we have the Texans home. Yeah, I'll start us off with this one. Um, I think they're, uh, at this point in the season, a way better football team than we are. I disagree. And, and we're going to take an L. I think we're... That would be my lock for the year. Would be the lock Houston for the year is yeah. a win. You want to make a bet right now on national television? Of thousands of people. <laughs> They're gonna hold us to it. I'll bet you. Uh, I don't want to go in, betting money against in the Browns, front of man. tens of people. Yeah, like a seven others. But you're betting that we're gonna lose that game. That's what I'm saying. I don't want to. I don't want to put money on us losing. That would be. I'd bet on that Bengals game week seven. I'd bet on it. You'd put money that right, we lose well, to the Bengals. Week seven, with the caveat that we win week six. Well, that's a, that's. <laughs> but that if we lose week six, do you lose the bet? If we there's no bet, or if, if we, we win week six, the bet is on. Yeah. I mean, I'd throw twenty Venmo dollars on that. Sounds like okay. If you make that bet, you have to make our bet. See, I don't like betting against the Browns, man. Then I can My bet for the Browns because if we lose, if I, if this bet even happens, that means we beat. Pittsburgh at home or in in Pittsburgh, so I'll be happy, and then equally as upset when we lose to Cincinnati <laughs> on the road. But I mean, the thing about betting against the Browns is, if you win, you're happy and you pay what twenty bucks, and if you lose, at least you have I twenty would, bucks. Even if I got twenty bucks, I'd still like would rather be wrong. Right, a hundred percent. Like I hope we win that Cincy right, well, game. Well, what do you guys think? The Texans. We're gonna lose. You think they're that much better? Offense? No. Do you think they're? I don't think they're that much I think better. Sean I just Watson think they win that much game. Than Baker Mayfield. Uh, yo, definitely. The uh, was it the first half of the Texans game last season that we just got obliterated? What are they gonna? Will Fuller is gonna build. He's gonna ball out this year. Talk about fantasy guys to watch. Will Fuller for five games. He's gonna ball out, and it's gonna be week ten. Okay. Against us. Well, you have my answer. I'll go on the record for a uh, little little Venmo bet. Okay, 20 bucks. 20 Venmo dollars. Um, weren't the Texans my lock for like the Super Bowl last year or something? Uh, it was 
It was two seasons ago. You bet me fifty dollars in wild card week. I was drunk <laughs> as hell. That I even, you know, as your friend, I I was trying to tell you that's not a good bet, Andy. Don't do it. But you were so confident. You started talking shit to me. I'm confident in everything that I do. You bet me fifty dollars in ele- wild card week by eleven eleven o'clock in the, Super Bowl. In, the uh, in the pit. I will. I'm confident in everything that I do. We weren't in the I'm pit. Peeing. We weren't in the pit. We were at uh, Ritter's old apartment in Westlake. Well, I don't. I don't need to hear anything about that. <laughs> um, week. I'm putting it. Week eleven. Eagles home. One of my exes was an Eagles fan. I got the Browns forty-nine to zero. <laughs> Carson Wentz will be intercepted four times by Greedy Williams. Wow. Um, That's a win. I have us losing. Why don't I feel like we Eagles. play the Eagles a lot? I mean, it's, when's the last time we played the Eagles? I don't know. I feel like it's not even a true statement, but I feel like we play them a lot. Didn't we play Mike Vick? I mean, that was a while ago, but didn't we play against Mike Vick when he was on the Eagles? I'm pretty sure we did. Maybe. Yeah. Was that their Maybe. dream team year? Yes. Uh, so the true weapon was on the bench holding a clipboard. Uh, Vince Young. Yeah, <laughs> man. I, <laughs> I thought when we signed Vince Young a few years ago that you had signed. a borderline obsession with Vince. We Young. met him. We did. Yeah, we met him. Um, uh, right before his big Rose Bowl game, it was against Michigan. That'll the do year it. Before he had the USC game. Yeah, it was Braylon. And we Edwards. were in um, what's this Pasadena when yeah. we met him? It was yeah. at downtown Disney. Right. He was a winner. Uh, anyways, I have us beating the Eagles that week. Yeah. Did if they had, Andy? if they had Vince Young, did Andy um, say anything? I said lost. It would have been different, but that's that's just not true. <laughs> At least you have gotten past that relationship. Yeah, I have not. When I said forty-nine to zero. I meant oh that relationship. <laughs> I thought he meant I thought he meant the relationship that we have with Vince Young. Well, we don't need to. <laughs> I'm at 80 to 0. Segway into that. 70 to 0, Browns. I'm over, <laughs> wow. I promise. <laughs> um, Jaguars. Minshew Madness. Oh, loss. I mean, loss for Minshew. It's a win for us. <laughs> Damn. Dude. Yeah, that's usually how you do it. Yeah. <laughs> loss for them. <laughs> Somebody's losing. Yeah, I mean, I've got us at a win there. They're, uh, they're a good team with a lot of potential, but... We They're don't. We, we don't need to go in that deep on that the Jaguars, and right win. Uh, win. Know, sounds like that's grounds for an upset right there. Just say. <laughs> oh yeah, let's. <laughs> um, I'm. We have the Titans week thirteen in Tennessee. Where Nashville. Win. 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 <laughs> Redeeming ourselves from last year. Yeah, yeah. Wait, is this a Monday night game? Uh, Monday. This is the no, game of the, the year. The next one is. Yeah, that's. Well, yeah, that's, that's what, what, <laughs> oh, I thought you meant Titans. It's coming one. Right. Um. Yeah, this is uh, this is the game of the year. The Ravens week fourteen, Monday night football. Ah, you guys should be at that. Oh, one. that's awful. playoff implications. Right. Right. For the Ravens and Steelers. <laughs> yeah, if we lose, they might get the wild card. <laughs> I've been at a Bengals game where it was the last game of the a year. Bengals game. A bang. <laughs> Went to a Bengals game. Went to a the Bengals bang. game. <laughs> uh, been to a Bengals game in Cincinnati. <laughs> How'd you do it? Been to a Bengals game. I've been to a Bengals game. <laughs> and where in Cincinnati? Where the Bengals play. <laughs> Been there. <laughs> Done that. Bengals. <laughs> um, yeah, I have gone to a Bengals game. Last game of the year. It's ben- He's saying Bengals is why it sounds weird. Is it not Bengal? <laughs> the Bengals, bro. Bengal bongo. <laughs> Bingo, Bengals, bongo. Wait, it's a bangle? It's not Bengals. Yeah, Bengals, like Bane, like the Batman character. Yep, Bengals. Bengals. Nobody knew who I was. <laughs> yeah, the Bengals. I, I used right to now. I used to say Bengals, and I thought I was saying it wrong. 
Maybe everyone's saying it wrong, but nobody says it like you are. <laughs> how do you say how do how do you I'm say gonna, how do you say the like the not the donuts but the croissant? <laughs> Bangal. Bangal. We're all wrong. <laughs> okay, Cincinnati that's Cincinnati Bangals. Yeah. <laughs> what time did we start this? Uh, we got ten more minutes. Um, enough time to win out. Okay. okay, we're taking way too so this, long. So you to went do to a Bengals game once. <laughs> oh, yeah, what yeah, happened yeah. when you went? <laughs> so we in the Bengals stadium. Yeah, Bengals. Yeah, stadium. The last game of the in year. The jungle. All they had to do was beat the Browns to get into the playoffs, and we won, and it was fucking awesome. I mean, hell yeah. Yeah, it was great. And then my Bringing dad. Us two five and eleven on the year. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh wait. But wait. it felt like a Super Bowl, and then yeah, after the game, my dad body slammed a guy. <laughs> and uh, slam someone. Yeah, so there was this Browns fan and this Bengals fan kind of like pushing each other a little bit. And we're just walking and my brother and I, I was probably nine or ten. <laughs> and my dad out of nowhere grabs the guy. <laughs> just the Bengals fan grabs him. <laughs> and then then <laughs> Yeah, he grabs him and just like body slams him. <laughs> <laughs> I remember like it was yesterday down to the <laughs> <laughs> and uh yeah then he 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 does it and then he kind of just like he gets up and he's like come on come on <laughs> we just we're walking away and then like both even the browns fan was like what the hell just happened like this guy just came There's out of up. yeah <laughs> so what was the provocation here was he just a Bengals fan he was just a Bengals fan was he a Bengals fucking, Gals fan just uh, talking shit or fucking what? with the browns fan and my dad mm. wasn't gonna have it oh we don't put up with that no mm-hmm. yeah i mean <laughs> I, I could g- <laughs> all that right sounds intense though yeah we were at the one browns game i guess we are closing we have to get done in like eight minutes but um where the browns fan was pissing all over the steelers fan that had passed out of the seat <laughs> was i there i think so i you must have blocked that out of my memory that i was- didn't <laughs> was he the browns, was the browns fan <laughs> It was in the dog pound, like three rows behind us. I wouldn't put it past Dad and Phil and to be like, "There's a toilet." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the Steelers fan was drunk and passed out, and then he started to get pissed on, and oh, that's guys turned right. around and there was, it started to fight. Like it wasn't like oh, a huge yeah, thing. he got shut down right away. But I, I yeah, would I, on there's him. one clear loser, no matter who won the actual fight. <laughs> It was it. He was he wasn't like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like what wakes him up. So. Okay, week. It's like Bud Light. <laughs> week, week fourteen. Beer guy. <laughs> <laughs> Beer guy. <laughs> All right, week fourteen. Monday night Mon- game against the Ravens. The Ravens are in. Town. That's a win. That's a win. That's a, you. You got to go win. We're not we. Uh, this is again like one that we're all gonna say that we win, maybe mm-hmm. or want us to win at least. But mm-hmm. like at heart, we know we're probably gonna lose. This is where I'm. Uh, I'm gonna be honest with my Brown schedule game, and I'm gonna give us an L. You know, I think we split with the Ravens, each winning in the opponent stadium. I thought you gave us a loss week one. No, you and Logan did. That's right. That was me, not you. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, let's move on. Week 15, December 20th, cold weather, New York in New York. Danny Dimes. Danny Dimes gets it done and hands us a win. <laughs> <laughs> Agreed. Yeah, we're going to win that game. Let's to stop touching. Same with the next one. Jets, we're going to win both New York games. Yeah. We're going to be in New York Sweeping for two New York. weeks. I mean, Odell's if COVID's gonna... done, uh, Andy, we can crash at my friend Alex's house and Go watch that game, man. She's a big Jets fan. Like, just go there to watch it at a bar. If COVID's well, done, if go COVID's to the done, game. we'll go to the stadium. You know, the Meadowlands. Yeah. You think they'll just open it back up like that? Oh, dude! If there's a vaccine, hell yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm done. See, I, I, mean, I, I, be I was one of those like people. It's like, later, why but... not? Instead of giving us, at least I see the Browns win. Yeah. <laughs> instead of giving us. A vaccine, give us a Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> no, instead of giving us a pair of gloves and socks, take the preseason money that we gave you and send us all hazmat suits. I'd go to every game in a hazmat suit. I'd party my ass off in a hazmat suit. Like, what's the harm in that? Dude, you can put on one I of those. I could see those like, getting nasty. 
I, I don't care how nasty the it is. Oh, okay. Things that you fill up, fill it up with alcohol and just Colin, through Colin the Colin Draga, I have to out you here, buddy. Last year, piston has man too. Up, up in the up in the stands, he and uh, he and Stump moved down next to me and Penna, and uh, you know we're all yucking it up, having a good time. Did he shit his pants? No, it wasn't that bad. But at one point, I look over to talk to Colin, and he's gone. And I was like, "Oh my God, where's Colin?" And in his place on the floor in front of a seat is a giant pile of vomit. And I would, we all vomit beef. I don't know. <laughs> Not all knows. of us. I've never vomited like, from even after all whoa. the drinking. I've never thrown up. This, that is, probably, this is a Bruce. A, thing. Our, our mom can't throw up either. It's a, this is weird. I've never thing. thrown up before. I've which, seen you. I should have should have led to my death. But oh, I never same. threw up. <laughs> I'm just saying, if Colin's got a hazmat suit on, yeah. I worry about how we. I mean, if we can take him off easily, they're not going to do the job, and I don't want him to be swimming in that stuff, man. You know, if you're swimming in it, you just leave. You gotta leave. Yeah, true. But uh, <laughs> you're gonna see people pass <laughs> pass out on their seat. You can't even like see through their hazmat anymore. Cause it's just full <laughs> of puke. No, but yeah, that's weird. You guys can't puke. I. I've I mean, stayed I have before, but not because of. I haven't puked since I was about seven. That's yeah, Andy. You've same. seen me, and that was when I had my close. First beer. I I stick around when I should go home and sleep. I just stick around to see if you'll you, puke. Like, throw up, and then are you one of the people that throw up, and then they're back in the game? Yes, I'm. I'm a notorious puker. And you remember how good I I would pregame really hard at Kent. I would puke without. I wouldn't even stop walking. I would just puke like in a I've bush i've seen that weird shit before that's crazy and then they're just yeah. like all right let's go keep going let's keep going puke, that was I'm me for the night that was I me i out. lay down like the spins it, and yep. it's like okay i mean I, i've been so to do that you use the system i developed a system the in getting college. naked system uh, yeah you need to get as much bare skin on as much cold floor as possible spread eagle and uh just breathe in and i would really like slowly. yell something to my roommate to hand me a beer take one more sip and fall asleep uh, you're stronger than See, me. See, <laughs> the thing, I've been to the point where this is actually kind of scary, where I've woken up and there's just been puke. Oh, that is pretty scary. Do we have to reset the camera? Uh, we can finish our schedule game real quick. So okay, we, yeah. We um, both New York games? Yeah. So uh, we, I think I gave us wins, wins for the Jets. Everyone wins? Okay. Um, the last game of the year, deciding who gets into the playoffs, us or the Steelers. What did I say about the other Steelers game? You said oh, yeah, we're gonna win. We're gonna win because we're gonna lose the right. Bengals. This is home. So right now, if I say the Steelers are gonna win, which goes against what I said earlier, but I'll have us on a <laughs> how many W's do I have? <laughs> are you are you calling a win? I'll just, tell you just, your record. Just say yeah, records at the end. Just... Win, win, win. We're okay, gonna win. Win, win, and we're gonna win. get a playoff berth because of it. Even okay. though we were, I mean, the yet. division race is gonna be tough. I've got so, us at a win. Yeah, I was edging it out at thirteen and three. <laughs> I've got us at a win as well. Okay. Okay. So let's let's yeah we'll. Uh, Were you at the office? Though? Yeah. Um. Sorry, guys. We kind of just realized that the video cut out for a little bit, but we're just gonna continue for now. Um. Yeah. So, what did we come out to with everything? Wait. What did you say for the Steelers? Um. I've got us beating the Steelers. So we all have us beating. Them. Winning that last game. See, this is... I mean, we've all got us... This is why I forced a loss in there at that Sensi game, because I started to look past the bye week, and I knew what I was going to do, and it's exactly what happened. <laughs> I, was I mean, every single game after the bye week. <laughs> I think I might have let us me, for the most actually, wins. And I, I, I usually... I want to get realistic here. I think... All right, I mean, Andy's got us... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go down the line. Okay. Or, or you know them already. I think we're going to lose one of the New York games. Huh? Well, yeah. not not even but games. Too late, too not late. even games. What do you think the record? Before you hear what you yeah. did game by game, what do you think the record? Well, it sounds it's yeah, it's awful. I have, I, mean, I think ten and six would be doable, but I know that's not what I have. Um, what, at what point are you disappointed? I'm disappointed if we are under five hundred. I'm if no, if we're not nine and seven, if we're eight and eight, I'll be disappointed. So winning record. Winning it's record. Satisfactory. Even though I have us at 14 and 2. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think we're going to win 11 games. Okay. Um, before this podcast, I had predicted 10 and 6. This is insane. You realize we've only won 10 games one time. 07. What a and year. we didn't even make the playoffs. Yeah. Well, I mean, they invented a rule about that. Remember the, the Cardinals game where Kellen Winslow was shoved out of the end zone? It was bullshit. It was complete bullshit. And, and then, then they, like, they uh, tailored the rule after the fact. I know, but it was a touchdown. It was. 
Man, can you imagine Derek Anderson starting a playoff game at 11-5? and five? Dude, that was – I mean, Braylon Edwards dominated that year. He was second in TDs. Yeah. Randy Moss led, obviously. That was that insane year where Brady threw 50 like, touchdowns. Yeah, 20 or something but, crazy. So Braylon had, 21. what, 17 touchdowns? He did. And then he also led the league in drafts that year. Yeah. So shout out to him. That's yeah. a, a Shout out Braylon Edwards. Braylon, if you're listening. Uh, a hard stat to carry. And this man, was a couple years after he got What a team. Fight. That was Jamal Lewis era. Which you loved you some Jamal. Dequel Jackson, like Andy mentioned. <laughs> yeah. All right. So moving into TJ Ward. Uh or no, was that after that, was, that? That, that? That was after. That was later. They had a white safety that we got from Minnesota. Brian Russell. That was his name. He was a sure. pro bowler in Minnesota. I, I, I don't even remember him. All right. So for context here, Andy, you have the Browns winning six in a row to end the year. And Logan, you have the Browns winning seven in a row. <laughs> um, what? <laughs> All right. That's why I think I, I had to throw in. I was just testing out a new like. Hoo, hoo. <laughs> Here we go, <laughs> brownies. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So after playing the Brown schedule game, Logan predicts us at twelve and four. Andy predicts us at twelve and four, oh, and yeah. I predicted us at ten and six. So that's wow. Realistic. So I do. <laughs> you, you knew, you knew what you six, were doing, though. Be. Is ten and six realistic? No, we're gonna go like seven and eight. Or, yeah, we're gonna, <laughs> We've, seven and eight. <laughs> so the season's gonna end before sixteen. Yeah, before the Steelers game. <laughs> so I'm thinking, dude. So I, I was gonna say I was gonna give us one of the New York games as a loss to try to help, but that still puts us at eleven and five. <laughs> I don't think we lose those games, though. You know. I don't think we lose any of them after the bye week. <laughs> I think we have a really... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, we could lose to the Texans in one of the New York games. So that would make sense. Well, right. so 10-6, 12-4, and 12-4. and four. Final, <laughs> how do the Browns end, everyone, quickly? How do they end? If they're 12-4, and four, they lose in the first round of the playoffs. If they're going 10-6, and six, they're going to win the divisional round and lose in the next round, I think. I think they lose in the AFC Championship. <laughs> it sounds so stupid. The only time we made the playoffs, we were seven and nine. No, um, <laughs> I think the Browns. My bold prediction is uh, making the playoffs first round exit. Yeah, I've got us um, in the playoffs. Not necessarily a division win. The Ravens are so fucking good. Yeah, and like I've said, I'm worried about the Steelers. Um, I've got a, a Big Ben revival happening this season. And who knows if they shorten the season and. Expand we the also playoffs. spent half an hour talking about how bad our defense was. <laughs> yeah, thirty first. Yeah, I have us at twelve and four. <laughs> yeah, I was the one supporting our defense, and yeah. I've got us at ten and six. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, I think we're gonna make the playoffs one way or the other. We're gonna win at least one playoff game, <laughs> at least one. Yeah, but we're not gonna win the, the league. Super Bowl. Better watch out. <laughs> yeah, the NFL is on watch. The worst we could possibly do is lose one playoff game. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think after hearing this, like, I wouldn't be surprised if we don't make the playoffs. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like, I mean, I agree. It's this... actually a fact that, like, the stats are on that side of we're not going to make the playoffs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, we could have recorded this um, schedule game any year of the past 10 years, besides the maybe the Hugh Jackson era, and we would have had the same predictions. I don't know, because so. we had Johnny Manziel, and I was convinced that he was the answer. I thought he was going <sighs> to take the league by storm. <laughs> he did, in a way. Yeah. I think I have nothing to say. I, I, I don't think we need to go in the direction of Johnny Manziel on this podcast <laughs> for as long as it's going already. Sure. Okay. So, I mean, I guess so. Uh, no Super Bowl for anyone? I'm not going to put money on the Super Bowl. Are the no. Cleveland Browns going to make the Super Bowl? Are they going to win the Super Bowl? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> no. They're not going to make the playoffs. Fair this point. Is, we just, again, spent 40 <laughs> minutes doing this. Yeah, and it's on. Actually, like probably more leaning towards they would go four and twelve. Wow. Do you think they'll be closer to four and twelve than they will be twelve and four? They'll be closer to twelve and four, I think. I don't know. I mean, it, that's I say, it could go either way. I mean, the like, the the median I, point there is I could, eight and eight. Realistically, so. I think I could see them going like eight and eight, seven and, and nine. missing the playoffs. 
Maybe 10 and 6. Yeah. And then we just, again, that's why I bought Madden this year, because then we just clean house, get rid of Odell, keep yeah. Jarvis. I think Jarvis will be here. I don't know. So who's winning the Super Bowl? Uh, um, shit, man. I don't know. I don't know. I could see the 49ers showing up again. What is Super Honestly, Bowl? Honestly, though. Likely Super Bowl matchup that you have. I, I could see. Seattle versus Tampa. They're both in the NFC. <laughs> That's the <laughs> NFC championship. <laughs> I forgot Tom Brady was in the NFC now. Um, <laughs> that just doesn't change the fact. Super Bowl well, 53. Well, no, I was thinking yeah, Tom Brady yeah, yeah, in the NFC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is yeah. the Super Bowl 54? I got the Steelers against the Ravens. <laughs> <laughs> Browns and Bengals. <laughs> Bengals. Browns and Bengals. 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 <laughs> Yeah, so this is a fantasy podcast that we have not talked about <laughs> fantasy yet. Since we did. There's a lot of 12 and 4. That's a fantasy. <laughs> it will never happen. <laughs> There's a segue into it. We just listened to some of our other fantasies. Now we're going to talk fantasy football. <laughs> you want um, the camera up for this one? It probably needs to charge a little bit. Uh, more, yeah, right? let's let it charge a little bit. Uh, we do apologize again. Well, I apologize. <laughs> You're We're the all sorry. league treasurer next yeah. year. Yeah. So if you guys could send us some money for better equipment, then we wouldn't have stuff uh, yeah. cutting out. Anyway, um, yeah. So it. first of all, Orchard, new commissioner, did some voting. Not much changed. Not surprised. I don't know about you guys. No, it tends to be the way of the orchard. Yeah. Resistant to change, even if it's for the uh, betterment of the league. Mm. So there was a vote that really never came to a conclusion, which is the, what was that, the PPR vote? Yeah. Do you have anything? It, it was a dead even tie, right? I don't remember who voted for what. Yeah, so um, technically that vote is still up. By just, the rules, just, yeah, it's currently an open vote. That up we need there. to re-vote. I think the current rules should probably say that we need a majority to create a new rule or to overturn a current rule. But by our current rules, the rules um, need updated. Honestly, they do. Yeah, that's that's my job for sure. Um, so I think that rule would need updated. Like if it's a PPR, like as much as I would love to see it go to six four, and then PPR goes into place, like I would. That's still like too tight of a. I feel like six four is still pretty split. I was thinking maybe seven to overturn seventy like percent of the league. Yeah, needs to, vote. to overturn like. Something set in like, stone rule like that. Yeah, but we'll pass after the PPR gets passed. We'll discuss that <laughs> after it gets, it's passed six four. Okay. So why don't you like PPR? Uh, easy points. I don't think easy uh, points. You think catching an NFL pass is easy? Easier than gaining yards. I, I mean, think. there's even right there. There's something to argue that. I mean, if you're I don't know. It, it's all about where your quarterback throws the ball. So, too. yeah, to me, I don't want somebody catching a no-gain pass and getting points for it because mm-hmm. they didn't actually impact their team. No, I, I agree with you. And also, I don't I don't really uh, vibe with this new idea of, like, trying to get high-scoring games. You know, the NBA is doing that. The NFL is doing that. I don't think the Orchard needs to push yeah, for high-scoring games. Yeah, it feels like games. touchdown reliant, which I, I with the current way the roster is built with three receivers – I agree with like that if that's the way the roster is built for non PPR, like we have the roster built correctly. Like if you're not going to get a lot of receiver points, you have to have three receivers. Then my thing was obviously to move it to a half point PPR and then allow for a flex instead. Cause I think that calls for more strategy as far as what you're doing with the flex position each week, what you can do in the draft. Do we want to like a, Kareem hunt? Like that's not the best example, but like a Darren Sproles guy a couple years ago, like that, you know, could put up 15 points with PPR he, with PPR, but I would want half a point full point. Full point is out of the question for me. Yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't even want to do full point. I would like to I, uh, yeah. test half a like, even if we put it, I up mean, my God, can we do quarter point quarter point. quarter point? <laughs> yeah. I would, I would even do that. Yeah. I feel like, if, I, I, I feel could. like catching a pass, like you, you should get something for it. Like Michael Thomas, like, you, Catching uh, 150 passes, like, dude, you need something for that. If you're even, I'd but, agree with that. But you if exhaust yardage, the defense by making them tackle you. 
there's some yeah, there's something to be said for catching the pass. Like I think like Kareem Hunt out of the backfield, like if he catches five passes for forty yards, should he just get four points? Is there any argument when it comes to like Christian McCaffrey that is already ridiculous and standard that it just makes him even more like But then you have the room for balance. like these other guys like that's where you pick up you can have a what i would player. argue especially if we have the three receivers keep it the three receivers which i i like it's hard to f- sometimes it's you really hard flex like a receipt there's not, really in our league that's there's not a place for that receiving running back that's kind of my whole belief behind this well I, I, christian McCaffrey what i'm really running dominates back. right huh? i said get a real running back i have real running backs josh jacobs last year <laughs> you didn't even make the playoffs last year Playoffs. <laughs> Playoffs? <laughs> Playoffs? <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I, like, I can see it both ways. I, I know you really like to... You think it would like mess with the integrity of the league overall. Um, I, I, Why? I, 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 <laughs> if it ain't broke... It is broke. And it seems like all leagues are... Because <laughs> you can't win or what? I, do- I have one. Who... <laughs> There's one person in this room that does not have a championship. <laughs> no, 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 that was today's episode of the Orchard Fantasy Podcast. These two will be I, getting the fuck out of my house. All right. So what are I the also rules? think here's a fun fact. I think I won my championship from inside of a treatment center, so that is embarrassing for you. About to say you had no distractions. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, and honestly, I that's I'm inside of a tree. Yeah, I thought he was about to say a tree house. I was like, man, <laughs> he didn't even have internet. I lived in an in an apple tree. <laughs> for... <laughs> oh but, man, yeah. Honestly, that's almost an unfair advantage. Right? True. Well, yeah. You, I guess you're like throwing up on the way to parties, <laughs> and he's a spread eagle laying on a cold surface. <laughs> I mean, I did drunkenly maneuver myself out of my second championship i sprinted up the the pit hill two years ago in my championship against cullen if i hear this story one more time replace don't think i've ever heard the story and i don't want to hear it Cortland sutton with dj moore and that's the only reason that i didn't beat cullen in both championships that season yeah i forgot that you had two you were playing for both cullen and i split them yeah so So, can you do 0.25 ppr i just feel like you can figure it out I, I really just feel like there's no place for the receiving running back. And I would really like, I mean, I played in a couple. Do you guys have flex in association? See, that's, I just think there's more strategy there. Like there's a way to like the strategy or an argument to be had for having a running back there. But then if there's PPR, then obviously there's. Like, and it would be a little bit easier to trade. I, I'm one, obviously you guys know that I like trades. I'm always the one in the middle of these like blockbuster trades. You know, yeah. <laughs> R.I.P. Cheese. Oh, fuck off! I I do yeah, not stop. trade rape cheese. <laughs> I know, I know. Like, if anything, I've given him solid players that just happened <laughs> to not work. Did not out. perform. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I I I look out for the person that I'm trading with, and it's Devin Funches has the same skill set as Michael Thomas. Everyone knows. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm not even going <laughs> to moving on. I, uh, another rule that I had talked to our commissioner about that, as you guys know, I wasn't present during the vote. Um, Why not? I had a uh, prior commitments. <laughs> <laughs> Was uh, Come on, the, the just toilet bowl. Where were you at? I'm just kidding. So the toilet bowl, <laughs> um, I think is a really good league. idea. I would like to see the, uh, the three week, sort of playoff from uh, the two last place teams. Um, but Jeff and I discussed maybe either locking their rosters or making it so that they cannot claim uh, an actual waiver. What if they have a couple people that get hurt? Right, so and that's an issue. they're just putting... But I, I, don't, I, don't, want, don't, want I don't want a playoff like the... team to lose out on a player because the Toilet Bowl guys have used well, like, the number one like waiver. On that, bowl, that's you, part of it, though. I feel like you shouldn't be allowed to pick people up. Hopefully I'm not in it this year. And this I think you me. can pick somebody up, but maybe you can't use the, the waiver. The wire. waiver wire. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, I think that's fair. So if they clear waivers, they're open game. That, that that's the way it needs to be. I yeah. think. And are we calling it the toilet bowl like everyone else? No, like we the can rotten come up apple. With, or the rotten something? apple would be good. I think. So, yeah, I still think we should do something where I, I don't know if they have to carry the rotten so, apple. 
Um, Need a trophy or something. Tyler's League, they do sort of like a punishment every year. And the one they had our first year of law school together was the loser had to take 12 uh, lewd photographs and create a calendar. And give, <laughs> give the calendar to the rest of the league. <laughs> like, who's the real loser there? Not not the not tenth place. <laughs> in Grizzlers League, they have to stand on the corner, maybe up right there on Tower Boulevard or something. I don't know where, but with a sign that says "I suck at, at fantasy football." Yeah, I still. I'd like, rather you guys see me naked on your calendar. I still like the idea of everyone gets together at a open mic comedy club and they have to give a fifteen minute set. That yeah. would be really funny. Yeah, yeah, that would be good. That would be. Who would be the First, who would be the best at it? And then, who would be the worst? I think... I might have the same answer for both. They, this person could okay. be potentially the best and potentially the worst. Wait, with you saying that, are you saying Dave Purcell? Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> no, I could see the same thing. Yeah. Um... Worst I would have to give to Oh, that's tough. Who's even in our league? I'll give be- I, I I'll give best say- to Shrada just because he would go up there and just tell they they wouldn't even be like good jokes. They would I just be we- like he'd just go up there like uh yeah. like he'd have like thirty jokes and to he, drop. And he would have that like character, you know? Yeah. Like he would have his like any what was that? <laughs> what was Naquin doing? Did you see Snarf? <laughs> was the video oh from a Snarf? <laughs> I think Ritter would be pretty bad at it. <laughs> like, I don't know. I was just going through the members of the yeah, league. Yeah. Obviously no, R- Ritter would friends, not be good. Like nothing against like I think it. I think Ritter knows he wouldn't like be good at that. He right. he he wouldn't have Problem with like the confidence part going up there. Like I think he could talk well, but I don't know. Like he's a funny guy, but it's right, not yeah, like, was like I think he's not like up the, on the stage like doing it. And Ritter, I know you'll listen. Right. It was. It's not personal. I just think. Oh, like, it's personal. It's, it's very personal. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we have a rivalry brewing now after the uh, harsh back and forth in the group chat. Oh, uh, the uh, the whole our job doesn't matter. <laughs> Speaking of uh, speaking say, of jokes, our job is a of, joke. <laughs> speaking of rivalries, I think we did want to get into something here in the fantasy. Uh, what? <laughs> Which one? The Bruce brothers? Yeah, man. Okay. Well, I, I think we were talking about Which Ritter. Mean, what about the bullet points saying why does Logan want to ruin the integrity of the league? Yeah, I was actually <laughs> curious about that one. It's the PPR thing, right? Oh yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So, Lee, so wait, what are we? Rivalries. Yeah. Um, We're talking about Ritter? Yeah, Ritter you came some, in hot. You have some notes here. Um, are Ritter, we talking about the group chat? Yeah, the group chat. Ritter came in hot, said our job didn't mean shit. <laughs> and that, that just because he doesn't take a break once in a while and yeah. has a big promotion... That he hasn't congratulations eaten on the promotion. Yeah, con- yeah, congratulations. congratulations. We're <laughs> extremely proud of you. Um, I hope all those days without eating lunch were worth it. <laughs> <laughs> but he, he thinks that selling on Amazon... Did I miss something not... in the chat? What happened? <laughs> no, it was just a joke between <laughs> yeah, Logan like, and I. It was just like when we were talking about the the draft or ever, and everything. Like Andy and I... Well, I I guess you can speak for yourself. I just did not want to draft late at night because we right. were really busy at work and mm-hmm. I didn't want to be up until one and then have to talk to clients all day the next day. Which is understandable. Right. With, yeah. Or and you have to do stuff for the clients, like visually. Right, right. right. And so we, just we've just been there. busy as fuck. Like, right. And then it's, yeah. I but, threw it out there and then Ritter just shit on it. It's like, oh, I didn't get to eat my sandwich. <laughs> all right, Ritter. I haven't had a ham and cheese in seven days. <laughs> we'll draft when I say so. <laughs> Honestly, like no matter what, everyone feels like whatever their plans are is the and most Dio, important. Didn't thing. Dio come in with a volleyball? Yeah, like come on, he's the only one that's. That's why I asked sacrifice. if it's a playoff. <laughs> if it, if it's not the playoffs, They're like find a playoffs. sub, bro. Right, find a sub, Dio. Jeez, 
Shout yeah. out to Jeff too. It sounds like he had to move one of his practices. Well, that's around. the thing. Jeff that moved, was big actually. Jeff yeah. moved yeah. a practice, and Dio wants to come in with his volleyball. Big commissioner energy by Jeff. Well, to be fair, like these are actual commitments. I get what they're saying. <laughs> And our office <laughs> was just saying we don't want to. <laughs> I'll be a little tired the next day. I can't. <laughs> My bedtime's two hours before that. Yeah. <laughs> we don't want to wipe the sleep each other of our eyes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, Ritter, Logan, rivalry. <laughs> Set in stone. Then we got the, I mean, the Battle of the Bruce well, I Bros. I has... even I accidentally just called him out as possibly being the worst at improv. I don't yeah. even know where that came from. Because <laughs> Rid- Ritter would be awful. Well, I mean, this. Ritter's like a, a really funny dude. Like, he's hilarious, but it's like you got to get to know Ritter and know. You, you yeah, have to know him. I feel preparation, like you'd probably though. be like that. Would, like, you'd go up there and tell dad jokes, and no one would think they were funny except for us. See, the problem with me is I th- I'm like the funniest person I know, so I can't get through my jokes that often. Like, Beef knows this. Like, I, I'll have something really funny to tell, and then I'll just start cracking up it's true i've seen it yeah, and that how the i'm movie, gonna the joker it, doesn't he do that in the joker i mean he, <laughs> he had like a condition my condition is just being a dumbass i want to get it on the record i believe in ritter's stand-up if he had preparation i mean if okay, this dude that's fair, that's if this fair. dude's in the toilet bowl for three weeks he's got to be thinking about his set the whole time i think the the truly right worst stand-up would be somebody that like who doesn't, doesn't prepare that doesn't believe they're gonna lose the toilet bowl and then we get up there the night of and just how, decimate them. How would Colin do? Colin could go up there. I mean, if Col- anyone's got dad jokes, no, it's Colin. <laughs> it's the OG daddy himself. <laughs> but no, Colin, see, it's... He has to call himself that if he goes up there. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everyone. I'm OG daddy. Was that a good uh, Colin impression? I don't think so. Um, see, it's it's everyone that has you could tell would go up there with like a character like Colin would go up there with a very like dry, like I'm just going to deliver this joke. And then if you like it, good. If you don't, uh, Shrata would have his me. And then it sucks that we don't have the video. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's moving. He's moving his are hands we, around. And are we yeah. charged yet? I feel like yeah, we're charged. All right. We'll stop it here. Is it nine fourteen? It is. Yeah. Okay, um, we're not gonna hook it up, but I'm gonna get Grizz in for his five minutes. Um, yeah, talk about the uh, Bruce rivalry. Do you have the phone plugged into the or the Bluetooth to the Roadcaster? No, I, I was just gonna hold it up. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I saw your, I saw your notes saying you wanted to talk about the Bruce brothers rivalry. I mean, it's always. Been a rival rivalry in my head. See, in my mind, I just had one question, and that is, what rivalry? <laughs> I did a little research, and oh, you know that's gonna get deep. Looking back, I've beat Logan four times in a row, including the playoffs two years ago. Last year, I finished. Sorry, two years ago, I finished top seed, lost in the championship, and last year Logan didn't even make the playoffs. And I just, uh, so the, I'm feeling a little Ohio State, Michigan right now. You know, we're we're interested in this for the legacy more than the actual. I think things game. turn around, and I think that the Brown Steelers is a rivalry, and I'm the Cleveland Browns on the come up, and you're Big Ben. You have one or two years left. Actually, your time has passed. <laughs> I. <laughs> Uh, since I have the Browns beating the Steelers twice, <laughs> I can say it's no a rivalry test. because we have uh we put some bets on it and logan presented one of the best ideas for a wager was it last year or two years ago i don't remember but we should follow through with that this year yeah we uh, you gotta show your dick to your parents no i mean they've seen it right i still live there so yeah i mean they've seen it <laughs> <laughs> but uh logan suggested that the loser of the bruce bowl oh i know this at i know this. thanksgiving dinner has to Tell our dad that he needs to start teeing off from the senior tees. <laughs> <laughs> has it ever been done? Uh, has he ever teed off from the senior tees? <laughs> has the conversation been had? No, we're all... That's what we have to... There, there would need to be a set way to go about it. Well, you better make we sure he get... doesn't listen to this. Right. Because <laughs> uh, cause I'm sure what Rob wants to do... <laughs> what, what he sees <laughs> three of us drop the podcast of us talking is hear more of us. Right. 
He's heard enough. Oh, he's heard more than enough. But yeah, I think the rivalry uh, could be rekindled if Logan has a better draft, if we keep the bets going. <laughs> um, you know, there is hope. It's, it's kind of like the Harbaugh if he era. Learns We're entering the, the, of... the Harbaugh era for Logan's, for Logan's team here. You know, there's hope. Hopefully a come up. <laughs> <laughs> But I just don't think I don't see things uh, changing. I don't see, I don't I don't see, see that, things changing. See happening. <laughs> There's hope. I don't see it happening. <laughs> uh, I mean, this year I, I'm guaranteeing a championship. I can feel okay. it. Okay. I've been slow. I've been slow the last couple of years. I wish you guys would be not as resistant to change um, and allow receivers whose job is to catch the ball to get points for catching said ball. They can if they just. I mean, what, what's next? Points for handoffs. Well, I mean, Browns have had a few running backs that have trouble with that in the past. So that would be nice. So I, I guess n- not to cut that off, but completely to cut that off. Um, do you think the indecisiveness or the always wanting to vote on things is kind of like, is it making is it making the league too indecisive on things? I think we're stuck in like 2004 fantasy football. Because oh, we're not four. changing anything. I mean, we are still on Yahoo, so yeah. Um, I Yahoo, love Yahoo, though. Yahoo, I like, I like being shout able- out to Yahoo Fantasy if you're listening. I think Yahoo of course is listening. a great, great I mean, uh, I like being able to go back and great look host. history. Yeah, it's fine. ESPN honestly kind of sucks. The app is not that good. I don't like ESPN. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah, I just don't like it. Their app has been pretty solid. Yahoo, that is. Mm-hmm. But, uh, Man, I rarely go on the computer anymore to use fantasy. I would always do it in class. For the yeah. for the for the draft. Yeah. I'm not gonna risk it on a phone. But I usually go dual computers if I can. I might have to. Our auction league that Turl started has a draft at the same exact time as the orchard. And if they can't move it, I might have to do an auction draft during our orchard draft, which wow. is tough because auction draft you have to pay attention every single pick. So I'm going to have to try to get them to change that. I think, yeah, the league is at a standstill because nothing gets voted in. I mean, I think that just think allows the, us to implement the uh, the views of our members. We need to see, like, the .25 PPR even would be, I just want to see something for catches. <laughs> Give an option to, like, somebody. Like, the a running back that doesn't isn't, like, the workhorse back has no value. The 2.5? Is that what you said? Yeah, or did two, I? 2.5 points per reception. <laughs> See, he he dropped that in thing, and we weren't going to hear right. that. We're like, yeah, we'll vote on the 2.5. <laughs> I don't know. I think we should do it, and I think the third receiver should be a flex so that you have an option to do if running back or receiver, whatever your style is. Hot. Hot as fuck. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Get this man on the He's going to be like in somewhere that has like a bunch of people in it. Or he's just going to mumble because that's how he talks. Hello. What's up, man? What's up, dude? I much. Just wanted to call you. Can you hear me, Andy? Yeah, can you hear me? Hello? Andy. Hey, can you hear me? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Oh, cool. <laughs> um, so, yeah, just wanted to get. Uh, I, I know it's you've been. Out, you're, it's cutting out. What's it? Grizz? I'm here. I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah. Alright, it's cutting in and out. It's cutting in and out. It'll be there another time I go. Well, we, we, now, we, can hear, <laughs> we can hear you well. Uh, I was just going to, yeah, give you like five minutes or whatever. Just kind of. Fantasy I know you, football, go. <laughs> talk <laughs> about our fantasy league. No, uh, yeah, just uh, talk a little bit about the Browns. Uh, I know you've been watching uh, or following the uh, training camp. Just want to see what your thoughts are on injuries, whatever. Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, I'm glad you guys gave me a call. Uh, I don't know what you guys have talked about so far as far as the uh, the fantasy football and the Browns yet, but uh, for the Browns' take, uh, I know I've talked to you guys a little bit about it, but we are uh, all psyched up and excited for this season. I've been pretty jacked up about it. I'm like, once again, I'm full go Browns. They're going to make the playoffs. Be awesome, As, yeah, we, we we all feel the same way. 
Exactly. Everybody's ready for minimum of 10 wins. Again, mark it down at least 10, maybe 11. Could go undefeated. And uh, oh, then, yeah, I mean, I'm obviously probably with the rest of Browns Nation now with training camp. Super, super bummed, super concerned with the defense. With, you know, greedy shoulder. Obviously, Dell Pitts out for the season, which the safety position was already concerned. So now we got Carl Joseph, and I don't know if second is Redwine or who we got next up there, which is super sketchy. Then you lose Mac Wilson. So you got Taki Taki, who played what? Special teams. And the dude from Green Bay passed off. So I feel like. Just name dropping. <laughs> So, so what are we, 40 uh, points a game or lose? What do you guys think? Yeah, that's kind of what we talked about a little bit, just our how strong our offense is and our defense is just very concerning. Um, tell yeah. them that we addressed all those concerns and tell them what records we still came up with. Yeah, we addressed all our like concerns with the defense and that um, it's a serious problem that we're ranked, what, 31st? As of right before now, before the injuries, before that was before the injuries, and we still all had what was our what were Logan and I? We had what record? Twelve and four. Uh, you two were twelve and four, and I had us at ten and six. Twelve and four from me and Logan. Ten and six from Beef. <laughs> I'd have to look closely at the at the uh, schedule again and go back over it, looking at some of the offenses. But like the way I see it now is. One, how does the locker room look? I think that we have to run the football a lot and then play completely out of the play action. But I just worry about the Odell thing, obviously. Like, you want to get Odell the ball. Obviously, Jarvis needs to get some touches. I mean, I think Hollywood's obviously a solid player. But then, you know, you've got two pretty good tight ends. One, I think, with Hooper that hopefully should be, you know, a nice upgrade. And then, but it's like you got Hunt and you got Chubb, and now you have a really bad defense. So I just feel like... We need to run the ball in order to run the clock, time of possession football, be on the field, and almost play defense. You know, maybe we sign somebody in the free agency, um, you know, for the safety position, and you know, drop some cash. Maybe Clowney still's out there, but I mean, I know he wasn't overly interested. So, but it's like when you look at it from a perspective around the league, it's like I feel like our offense needs to stay on the field. But does that cause havoc? And you know, does Odell get pissed? You know, what are we doing with the, you know, the offense? Or is it just going to be like ground and pound with Nick Chubb and Hunt? Like, what do you guys think? I agree. I just think yeah, I'm with you on that, Nate. Oh, I don't know if you heard them, but they, they all agreed. I, just, I feel like if you're in and out, if you're playing the shotgun, like, you can't afford turnovers anyhow, but not with our defense. And I just, plus it's like no one else can get hurt. And because you have no more depth as it is, and then you can't be on the field too long with that because they're going to get burned out and exhausted by the third and fourth quarter if you're on the field too long. So I'm just a little bit nervous for things like Odell and then obviously the, the normal factors that our defense, in my opinion, is the worst linebacking core in the league. You can't call it a core. Don't from... call it a core. Yeah, is it a core? It's not a core. Is a random group of men that just happened to be called linebacker? Yeah. Yeah, makeshift, half special teams, large men. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, I don't know. Like, I said to Logan a couple of days ago, I was like, what is it? Like, Miles Garrett hurts the quarterback or we're screwed? Yeah, we kind of talked or uh, spoke on that earlier. Uh, it's pretty much just Miles Garrett at this point. I mean, we, we have a solid... The D-line solid. The D-line yeah. is solid. But, the D-line yeah, is solid. But it's almost like, you know, they can only wreak so much havoc. So, like, yeah, I'm joking, but almost not. It's like, I feel like if you don't almost, like, low-key injure the starting quarterback, and Nate, you have to stay on the field. There's going to be a lot of people like, watching. You can't say that. Yeah, well, you, you know, that's not my philosophy, guys. I'm a, <laughs> I'm a, I respect the game. But... <laughs> Uh, no, but really, it's like, I, I, don't, I don't know that we can sustain. The NFL offenses are just so much more explosive now. Everyone goes for, like, 25-plus a, a game most of the time, and it's like, 
I feel like we're going to have to run the football. We're going to have to stay on the field. We're going to have to slow the game down and make sure our guys have a lot of rest just so they can play at a sufficient level or else they just are going to get slaughtered in, in a lot of these games. And then, it'll go. you know, if we get behind, then we're going to have to go to the air. And it's like it goes away from Nick Chubb. It goes away from Hunt. And then all of a sudden we're throwing. And then it's the question, can Baker step up and be what he was that first season? Or is he Baker of last year? And we have some turnovers. And we're taking some sacks. And we know we have a rookie coach. And it doesn't fall apart in a hurry. So, I don't know. It'll be super interesting. But... Definitely some concerns out of out of Brown's training camp, man. I think that if we don't sign somebody, you know, I know we got like what Malcolm, but Malcolm Smith, linebacker. I mean, was yeah, he like about to retire? I don't feel good about that either. Yeah, interesting man. takes. <laughs> yeah, no, you you made a lot of solid points there, and a lot of stuff that we. Uh, <laughs> like talked about. We're we're laughing because like we we've been talking for like so long and this podcast is going we planned on it being like an hour it's at least going to be like two and a half man probably three hours (laughs) no no, we're definitely going to have to cut it down but yeah yeah a lot of points that we also made and yeah good stuff man all right guys well i'm glad you guys gave me a call in um and and i'm always happy to talk brown shop and then maybe in the future uh i'd like to to hear more about the, the fantasy results too, the week by week standings, where things are moving, who's who's taking what. Well, when's your draft? You guys do it yet? Uh, Wednesday. I don't know. Right before the season. Oh, okay. It's gonna be yeah. I think like the day before the first game or something. It just just because of all of our schedules and such. So. All right, man. Well, guys, thank you for pulling me up. I look forward to uh, catching the, the the whole version of the podcast myself. Um, but hopefully go Browns. Um, I'm hoping we get some, some, some signings still one or two yet. Um, so that we can pick some more up on the defense, but ultimately those are, uh, those are my Browns takes for right now. And I guess my record would be nine wins is where I'm at right now. I want to go with a, a 10 plus, but I guess I'm going to, I'm going to hit us with nine because man, are I you think we are, had the worst. I'm going to go with a 32nd ranked defense in my mind. I, I genuinely, Besides Miles Garrett, think that and I think the D line's okay, but I think that outside of him, we'd be thirty-two flat out. So I'm gonna have to go with with nine wins, boys. Nine wins. Are are you even a Browns fan? I know it's tough. It's tough. I think it's the like lowest I've given them in three years, even with this talented team. But uh, I think it's the worst defense we've had in a while. I think it's pretty bad. Yeah. No, I feel you. But thanks, man. I, we really do appreciate it, and uh, a lot of good points made there. All right, guys. Well, uh, enjoy the rest of the podcast, man. I'll, I'll talk to you guys later. Thanks for calling me. Yeah, for sure. We'll later. see you, man. Have a good night. Right, see you guys. Later, Nate. A man of few words. <laughs> <laughs> it really is hard to pry and get it out of him sometimes. <laughs> he did make a lot of good points. And, I forgot uh, about the Malcolm Smith signing. He's mm-hmm. been on that one. He's told me about it like four times. And I keep forgetting about it because I don't know who the hell Malcolm Smith is. <laughs> I guess he's a heard Super Bowl MVP. Yeah. So I've heard of him? Um, Bowl MVP. Yeah. When? I don't know. I thought he was right. Malcolm, look up Malcolm Smith. Malcolm Butler. Yeah. See, that's what I thought. See, Nate was wrong. Call him back. <laughs> Ask him where he heard about the Malcolm Smith thing. He played at USC. He was drafted by the Seahawks in the seventh round in 2011. Malcolm Butler was a Super Bowl MVP, right? I think so, yeah. For that um, interception of Russ, probably. Mm. They should have ran it with beast mode. Uh, where are we at on time? I have no idea. Nine tackles, a fumble recovery, and an interception return for a touchdown against the Broncos. All right, well, then our defense is pretty good. Put us at 13-3. Yeah. and three. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'll move us up to at, at least two playoff wins. Wow! But yeah, we'll uh, we'll wrap it up here. Um, if you guys want a longer podcast than this, please Get put life. it in the comments and let us yeah. know that you would like to hear us even longer next time. Um, anything before we leave? Closing comments, beef. Uh, good luck this year, guys. You'll all need it. Logan, I'm guaranteeing a championship. Wow. <laughs> this man's going to be in the toilet bowl. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, I'll win the toilet bowl. But uh, thanks for tuning in, guys. Um, glad to be back. Hopefully the season happens. And until next time. Bye-bye. Oh, I feel for my brother. The long one. The long one. Feel for my brother. You know, a lot of my brothers are dead and gone. But they've been hanging on the block a little too long. What can I say? I hope they live to see a brighter day. And the ones that are doing fine. God bless you, cause you're doing fine. At the end